favorite bet is the pick six, and I know I'm definitely in the minority in this, but I've always been a pick six player. I like the challenge of it. Uh, you have to have a different mindset and a different mentality for that bet because you're going to lose way more days than you win. But the trade-off is the days you win, the pick six can make a difference. I'm not going to say life changer because I think that's a cliched phrase, but it can make a difference when you hit a bet like the pick six. It's a lot of work. It takes more capital, and you have to prepare to, to go through long losing streaks. But when you're right, and that bet pays off, to me there's nothing more rewarding than the pick six. I know every handicapper looks at things differently, but to me there's no more valuable tool than video replays. Because you'll see things the second, sometimes the third time, you didn't notice the first time you watched the race. But the one or two nuggets you find, whether you see a player or a horse that nobody else saw, makes it all worthwhile. It's a lot of interpretation. Uh, two people can watch the same race and have completely different interpretations of the outcome. But to me, watching video, no replacement for it. What up, Giants and Jets fans, and welcome to week 11 of the NFL season. We're doing this thing. You're watching FanDuel Sportsbooks, more ways to win. Thanks for hanging with us. I'm your host, Lisa Kearney, getting you ready for all the NFL action. And, of course, I am always joined by my awesome team of sports betting experts. These guys are here to help you make that money. So now is the time to download the FanDuel Sportsbook app to place your bets with their advice. It's that easy, guys. Plug in the promo code MoreWays1000 to get your risk-free bet up to 1000 bucks. Again, it's easy. It's legal. It's so much fun. So let's get this party started. They're ready. I'm ready. You're ready. And Giants fans, you already know this. Your team is on a bye. So hey, we're kicking things off with your New York Jets headed west to take on the Los Angeles Chargers here in New York, coming off of their bye week and still looking for that first win of the season. Is this going to be it, guys? Joe Flacco will be back under center for Gang Green. Uh, the offense has not found any rhythm this year, ranking last in the league in total yards, passing yards, and scoring, Andrew Filipponi, Jets getting eight and a half points in this matchup. Does New York cover? I think they've become one of the best bargains in sports betting, to be honest with you, Lisa. Yeah, I think they do, because partly what you just said there, there's this you know notion that the Jets are you know the worst team of all time. They're going to go 0-16. Well, they did just score 27 points against the Patriots. Joe Flacco found the fountain of youth. He threw for three touchdown passes, and they're now facing a Chargers defense, Dave, that's given up 29 points or more in six straight contests. How do I bet with a big number on a team like L.A. when they're giving up a ton of points? I can't do it. I'm going to take a shot on the Jets. This game is in L.A. It's not in New York where they were last week when they scored those points because when you look at their four road games, they're averaging about eight points a game. They've been outscored 122 to 33 in those four road games. Who would you rather have, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams or Crowder and Perriman catch the balls? I'm going with the Chargers here. I wasn't going to bring it up, Pony, because it's been a long year, but you might have one of the worst picks we've ever had on this show, and that's saying a lot because I'm on this show. But you picked Sam Darnold to be the leading yardage quarterback this year, so I think you should be disbarred from any more Jets picks at all. Dave, who was your Super Bowl pick out of the NFC this year? Uh, I think it was the Falcons, and I also had Vic Fangio to be coach of the year. But leave me out of this. Yeah, this argument is aimed at you, Pony. You just sit there and you take it. Uh, hey, Jets fans, <laughs> you can support your team. Roll with your guys. Take the Jets getting the points here right now, eight and a half. A winning $50 bet on New York means that you are going to collect uh, more than $94 on your wager. Look at that. Return on investment. It's the FanDuel Sportsbook app. All right, let's move on to a huge AFC matchup between two six and three teams here jockeying for playoff position. This is the time of the season where guys are doing this. The Titans take on the Ravens in Baltimore. Two great teams. Both teams, though, struggling a bit after their hot start, right? The Titans have lost three of four. Baltimore's dropped two of three, including a loss at New England on Monday night. Baltimore giving six points in this matchup. Dave Weaver, coming to you first this time, which side do you like? We have two struggling offenses in here, but I think especially Tennessee struggling offensively. They've scored... Uh, 
got less than 300 yards offensively in three of their last four games. That's why they're losing those games. And we'd go to the playoff game last year. Baltimore actually outgained Tennessee by 230 yards, but lost. So this is a huge revenge game for the Ravens. And Pony, I know they have the Steelers coming up on Thanksgiving, but at this point, when you're a three loss team, you don't have the luxury of looking forward any longer. They need to take this game very seriously. They cannot afford to go six and four. And coming off a loss is actually a good thing for Baltimore. The other two times they've lost this year, they've basically shut down the, the offenses in the following game, giving up just 27 points combined. So I think Tennessee is going to have a very hard time getting the ball into the end zone. Well, I don't because of Derrick Henry. And when they met in the playoffs last year, he went for 195 yards. And then Baltimore spent the entire offseason, Dave, trying to find players to stop and slow down guys like Derrick Henry. For example, Calais Campbell. Well, now he's hurt. Brandon Williams, their big nose tackle, is injured. They've got two rookie inside linebackers who got absolutely run over by the Patriots' run game last week. Damian Harris, who is not Derrick Henry, went for 121 rushing yards. Styles make fights. You know this horse racing. Certain horses do good in the mud. Others do good on grass. I just think this is a bad stylistic matchup for Baltimore, and I'm getting a lot of points with Tennessee. I think they can go there and win the game, so I'm absolutely going to play Tennessee as an underdog. Well, in sports betting, we like trends, and already in this trend, it is to bag and uh, really just knock on Pony there. So go ahead, guys. Go ahead and fade Pony. If you like reigning MVP Lamar Jackson and the Ravens to cover in this matchup, hey, place a winning $50 bet to collect more than $97 on your wager. And, of course, you guys know how we roll on this show. We are just getting started on our Week 11 Breakdowns. Ahead, we are headed to prime time, getting our guys' picks for Sunday night and Monday night football. That's coming up right here in just about 10 minutes. Time now to get to our director of risk and trading, the best in this awesome business. John Sheeran is joining us now. John, get in here. Of course, that's just a fancy way of saying that he's the guy that sets the lines for us at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, Sheeran, we've seen some movement here, some uncertainty. There's some teams dealing with COVID issues this week. So most of the market does not have lines up for several key games here. But FanDuel has all the games listed right now. You can bet them on the app. Tell us how you're able to have them all available for us uh, this time of the week. Well, it's a bit of guesswork, Lisa, to be honest, but we understand that the unknowns that we have that are the reason that a lot of these games are off the board at most operators. Uh, the customers also are, don't have any uh, more information than we do. For example, the Kansas City Chiefs and, and Las Vegas Raiders, we were minus seven yesterday when the news broke that almost their entire uh, defense has been put on uh, the COVID list. And now we obviously know, and we've seen this already, that that can change on Saturday and almost certainly will. We don't know exactly who's out. Is our confidence in the line diminished by that news? Absolutely, of course it is. But we don't want uh, people not to be able to bet on the Kansas City Chiefs. So we move that line to minus eight. Uh, it's only a point, but obviously off a key number from the touchdown at seven. Uh, and we think that the vast majority of that Raiders defense will be given the green light on Saturday. Uh, but fundamentally, we want people to have choice, want to be able to make sure that our customers can bet on these games, even though the entire market is down. So we'll continue to have a stab at guessing who's going to be in and who's going to be out and what, uh, what uh, impact that will have on the line and let customers make their choice from there. Certainly great customer loyalty and great insight from you, John Sharon. We'll talk to you again in just a little bit. Of course, John sets the lines for us at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, and Jets and Giants fans, this is my personal invitation to you all for you to join us at the FanDuel Sportsbook. All the weekend games are available at the Sportsbook, and that is where you should be there with us at the Meadowlands. Across from MetLife Stadium. You can't be in the stadium. We know that right now. But you can be at the Meadowlands of TVs. I've talked about it every week. Table service, food and drink. Of course, live sports betting on your favorite teams, your favorite players. Mask up, stay safe, keep your distance and join us at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. We look forward to welcoming you there. Week 11, it's going down. Let's continue these breakdowns. And of course, you can also place your bets on the app right now. So let's do that by putting some math to our money right now. The analytics answer is coming from this guy, Ed Egros, joining us from Dallas. Ed, where is the low-hanging fruit this week for you? Lisa, I want to talk about the Packers and the Colts, and I know we're still jittery picking up our collective jaws from the floor 
after that catch by DeAndre Hopkins. But if there is an MVP for wide receivers in the NFL this season, I believe it should go to Green Bay's Devontae Adams. This season, Adams is the highest target share of his team's passes at 35%. His weighted opportunity, or Whopper, which incorporates a player's share of team targets and share of team air yards, that's .79. That's also number one in football. And airyards.com calculated all of this for me, so they get the assist. Colts do not have anyone as, as close as explosive for this one. Highest receiver they have in terms of weighted opportunity is Paris Campbell. .55 Whopper, good for 24th in football. 20% target share for his team. That's also 24th overall in the league. There are injury concerns with Adams, yes, but he's missed time for four. The Packers have usually made it work there. I also trust last week was a fluke for both teams. The Packers were better than last week. The Colts may be a little bit worse than last week. And I'm going to go with a Packers money line in this one. I'm going to fade you, and I don't pick games based on wide receivers. Randy Moss never won a Super Bowl. Terrell Owens never won a Super Bowl. Antonio Brown hasn't won a Super Bowl. So I don't make my determination based on who has the best wide receiver. And plus the Colts' pass defense has been phenomenal this year. Corner Xavier Rhodes, look for him in this matchup to do a good job on Devontae Adams. This is not a Super Bowl, but fair enough. Uh, another game that I think has some good value, total of 48 and a half between the Cowboys and Vikings. Again, the quarterback situation is in flux in Dallas, and while it might be unfair to lump Andy Dalton in with the other backups, I think there's still some insight here. Since Dak Prescott got hurt, the Cowboys have had the worst EPA per dropback of any offense in the NFL at negative .427. For perspective, the second worst is Chicago at negative .164. That is a humongous difference between 31st and 32nd. Minnesota has actually had a solid passing attack in that same time frame, but it's what they do on the ground that matters. The Vikings run 50.57% of the time. That's fourth highest in football. If you take out garbage time, it's actually second highest at 56.5%. Cowboys have, have uh, struggled throwing the ball. Minnesota wants to run the football, which limits possessions by both teams. I think this is an easy under here. I'm with you on this one, Ed. I'm going to absolutely tell you because, like you said, both teams are going to be running the ball. Ezekiel Elliott, a lot healthier now with some extra time off, so you know he's going to get the ball a lot. And we know Dalvin Cook is the best in the league. So this is going to be run, run, run. What happens when the teams are running, the clock is running, and this game's going under. No doubt about it, guys. Of course, in addition to betting the total, you can also bet the spread. And New York fans, you can root against the Cowboys. And make money at the same time. Win-win, right? Uh, bet $50 on the Vikings to cover. You're going to collect more than $95 on your bet. And remember, download the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now to check out all the Week 11 lines available for you. Uh, and don't forget to use that promo code, More Ways 1000 I'll continue to remind you throughout the show, but it is right there on the bottom of your screen. And for all of you new users, welcome. We are so excited to have you with us. And we get it. Sometimes when diving into something new, it can feel a little bit like drinking from a fire hose, right? Info is coming hot and fast. So we're going to slow this thing down for just a sec and get to our sports betting 101 segment. And for this, I need Dave, my guy. We talked about spreads, Dave, money line bets. We talked about total wagers as well. Fill us in on what all of this means and give us your best bets for each here in week 11. What you got? Yeah, well, let's see if I can give you three winners and at the same time kind of explain what these terms mean. We'll start with the spread bet, and that is the amount of points attached to a team in the game. So we're going to go to Baltimore and Tennessee. The spread in this game is kind of fluctuating between six and six and a half. Right now, the Ravens are a six-point favorite, which means if you're betting Baltimore like I am, they need to win by at least seven for you to cash that ticket. If they win by between one and five, you're going to lose. And if they land on six exactly, it would be a push. But I'm going to say that Baltimore wins by seven and covers the spread. Now, when you look next to that, and we'll switch games here and go to Kansas City and Las Vegas, but you're going to see a money line. In the money line bet, you're just picking who is going to win the game outright. There is no spread involved. So it doesn't matter if they win by one or if they win by 20. I don't see any way that Patrick Mahomes is losing to the Raiders twice in the same season. I think Kansas City bounces back with a big win here. But just in case they win by seven or three or four, that's okay. And the, the difference, though, in the money line is there's more risk involved on the monetary side. Where it says minus 370, you have to put up $370 to make 100. But I'm willing to do that. I think they win this game. And as far as the total, 
You're just going to add up the points at the end of the game between the two teams. Let's go to Cincinnati and Washington for my example here. 46 and a half is the total. So if I'm going to bet the over, which I am, I need at least 47 points between the two. It could be 47 nothing. It could be 24-23. As long as we get 47 points, this game goes over and we cash. And right now, Alex Smith has this Washington offense rolling and Joe Burrow has the Cincinnati offense rolling. I think this is a high-scoring game, so give me the over. There it is. And there you go, New Jersey. Plenty of spread, money line, and total bets available for you right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Thank you, Dave. Also, a ton of fun parlays, a props, alternate line spreads available for you guys as well. For those of you who have been at this for a little bit of, uh, for a little bit of time here, check it all out on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. Again, use that promo code MoreWays1000 for your risk-free Bet. And not only can you place your bets with us, but you can uh, stack your daily fantasy roster right now on the FanDuel app. Let's dig in on DFS right now and help you turn just about four bucks into $500,000. I mean, that's a good day, right? All you have to do is enter the FanDuel Sunday Million Contest on FanDuel.com and on the app right now. Of course, our job on this show is to help you win all that money. So we're hooking you up with the best value plays for your lineups here. FanDuel Editor-in-Chief J.J. Zacharyson joining us now with his best values for Week 11. Hey, J.J. Hey, Lisa. I never thought that I would be in this position, but I'm recommending Taysom Hill this week, who's $4,500, and he's eligible on FanDuel at the tight end position, so you're not throwing him in as a quarterback because Jameis Winston with Drew Brees out is likely going to see the majority of snaps under center for New Orleans. But Taysom Hill might be thrown in there a little bit more than usual, but even if he's not, over his last three games, he's averaged almost seven rush attempts per game. This game against Atlanta has one of the highest over-unders on this slate. Maybe they throw Taysom in at the goal line a little bit more than usual as well. So given his price, I actually think that he's a nice punt at the tight end position here in week 11. I also like Deontay Johnson, who's $6,400. If you look at Johnson's season in total, he has a 19% target share. That's good, not great. But if you look at the games where he didn't leave early, that target share average per game jumps to 25%, which is really, really strong. The Jaguars have been a below average team and adjusted points allowed this year. So at $6,400, I think that Johnson makes a lot of sense as a value. And then finally, there's DeAndre Swift. Swift played a season-high 73% of Detroit snaps in Week 10. He turned that into a 76% running back rush share, a 15% target share, and now Detroit faces Carolina, who have been gashed by running backs all season long with the fifth-best matchup in terms of opponent-adjusted fantasy points allowed. So I really like DeAndre Swift at $6,900. Great stuff, JJ. Of course, a lot of that is all about that share, right? Make sure to use JJ's information for a shot at winning $500,000 in the Sunday Million Contest right now on FanDuel.com. Again, only about four bucks to enter the contest. There is a prize pool of $2 million. It's FanDuel.com and the FanDuel app. Time now to pile them up and watch them pay. Let's bet some same game parlays now. SGP is where you combine multiple bets from one game. The bet's self-explanatory, you guys. You know how this works. You can dramatically increase your payout on your bet as you combine your wagers for the same game. So let's rock this thing out, guys. But before we get to week 11, I got to give you guys some well-deserved fist bumps for last week. Pony, you gave us Jags over 19 and a half points plus Jags. I plus 10 and a half on an alternate spread. A $50 bet collected more than 124 bucks. Fist bump to you, Ed. You parlayed the first half and full game under for the Texans and Browns along with the Browns winning at half and full time. That also hit and paid at plus 515. So 50 bucks collected Ooh. more than 300 dollars right yes winning so let's get your same game parlays for this week dave uh pressure's on man who you got here in week 11 what you got yeah the baby steps for me i'm just going to try to hit one here it's nothing really all that crazy but i'm going to get more value than i would in just betting the chiefs in general i'm going to take the chiefs against the las vegas raiders to win by at least 14 points so that's the four-way margin bet uh chiefs to win by 14 or more. And then the first half total for them seems very low, 16 and a half. I mean, I don't see any way that they're not getting at least 17 in the first half when they go into Vegas and roll early. So that's all, just those two things. I'm going to get just about two to one on my money. I'm going to look at the Washington-Cincinnati game, and the Bengals score points when they're not playing the Steelers and Ravens. We know that about them. 
And Washington right now with Alex Smith at quarterback is in, I think, position to win shootout games. 394 yards last week for Alex Smith in his first start. He targeted Terry McLaurin nine times, so he's got a go-to guy. Plus 410 when you put these two things together, the over and Washington winning a very close game. Falcons and Saints, the Jameis Winston Taysom Hill power three hours with Drew Brees out for a couple of weeks. They're going to air it out. I think that's safe to say. It's going to lead to some lengthy touchdowns, but it may also lead to some interceptions and some shorter fields for the Falcons. Pace of play should go up in this contest as well. With one of the higher totals of the week, I like an alternate total over 54 and a half. But a Saints first quarter money line, you combine it and a $50 bet scores me, uh, give, give or take about 220 bucks. Oh, that plus money, guys. Awesome stuff. You can tail one of our guys or, hey, build your own same game parlay right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Just click on the game that you like, hit the same game parlay tab, and just watch your odds increase right in front of your eyes. Have fun with it. Be creative. And FanDuel is offering a special promotion if you place the same game parlay. That is at least three legs, and the odds are plus 200 or longer here. If you lose exactly one leg of that bet, FanDuel will give you up to $25 inside credit. So make sure to take advantage of this special promotion today, week 11, kicking off. This is your moment. Well, I teased it. Time now to deliver and step into prime time. Let's get to it. We're starting with the Sunday night matchup here, guys. A huge AFC West showdown with the 8-1 Chiefs in Las Vegas facing the 6-3 Raiders. We've already talked about this game a little bit here. Kansas City coming off thereby looking to avenge their only loss of the year. The Raiders beating the Chiefs 40-32 to in Week 5. Hope you took the over on that one, despite the Chiefs are eight-point favorites in this one on the road. Dave, give me your pick. Well, in that game, the Raiders put up 346 passing yards against the Chiefs, which was the most of the season. But Steve Spagnuolo made immediate changes, and their secondary has been much better since then. So I'm not expecting the Raiders to do what they did in that game. The Chiefs' last four games, they've only given up 203.8 passing yards. So this can be a more difficult situation for Derek Carr to move the ball on Kansas City. And you just talk about Patrick Mahomes and the one team that he likes to pick on the most, it's the Raiders. Yes, I know that he's in that same division, but this is not a skewed stat. He's got the most passing yards, the most touchdowns, the most rushing touchdowns all against the Raiders. They've actually played the Broncos one more time, less yards and less touchdowns, and against the Chargers, about 400 less passing yards. So he loves to pick apart this Raiders defense, and he will do that in this game. Give me the Chiefs minus eight. Even if this goes up higher, I think the Chiefs blow them out. I love that stat. She's 15-3 and three against the spread in their last 18 games. Let's move on now to Monday night, and this one features a big NFC battle here. 6-3 and three Rams head to Tampa Bay to take on Tom Brady and those 7-3 and three Bucks. Rams coming off a big win over Seattle. Bucks giving three and a half points in this matchup. Pony, which side are you taking? Well, I think there's a very simple formula for the Buccaneers to win this game and cover, and that's to make it a higher-scoring affair. They are 5-0 and this year, Tom Brady's team, when they score 30 or more points. When you look at L.A., they've been winning with defense. The last four games, you know, they've stayed under 30 points. So it's incumbent on Tampa Bay with all their weapons now to get to that number. And I believe at home, they can do that. The last time L.A. went to the state of Florida, it didn't go too well for them. They lost to Miami. And I see that happening again. Give me Tampa Bay. Okay, great stuff, guys. Hi, hey, John Sharon. I got to get back to you right now because I get a lot of questions each and every week. Betters wanting to know which teams are getting the most action right now. What are you seeing here in week 11? Uh, the Cleveland Browns, uh, Lisa, Dave Weaver must have his gang of um, runners all over uh, New Jersey <laughs> betting the Browns. Uh, minus three at home to Philadelphia. They've taken a ratio of about four to one on the spread. Uh, our look-ahead line, Lisa, was one and a half. It was moved to three after the respective results last week. Uh, One-way traffic, as I said, since then. We actually like this spot, though. Uh, like the bias towards Cleveland. Like the money and the position that we're building here on the Browns. Uh, we made this just under a field goal, a little bit closer to two and a half. But I think the matchup is actually pretty good for the Eagles. Uh, the Browns have only scored 16 points in their last two games. Admittedly, those games uh, were affected by weather. Uh, but we think that the Eagles will be able to stop that run um, preference from the Browns, particularly on early downs. 
Uh, the Eagles are getting healthier. I know you wouldn't think it looking at the giant game here in the MetLife last week, uh, but we think the Eagles can do enough to cover despite all that money coming in on Cleveland. Great stuff, and you're right. Yes, Dave has been uh, working his channels to get you into that mode. Uh, some breaking news, guys, in the Kearney house. I'm going to take just a moment here. Just got a new little puppy. So in love. So this segment is for my baby boxer, Boda. Uh, let's put some money on some dogs here in Week 11. Pony, I know you're a dog guy. Of course, betting on an underdog to win outright is going to get you some great value and a big payout here. So let's get some money line moneymakers for my little guy, Boda. Dave, do it for Boda. You first. Who's on upset alert this week? All right, Boda. We're going to go with one of the bigger underdogs uh, on the board. I think the Jags are actually the biggest, but the Dallas Cowboys uh, getting over a touchdown. I think they could win this game. They're fresh off of you know a rest advantage. They're 11 and four over the last 15 games, the last five seasons. And on the other side, Minnesota on a rest disadvantage is only seven and eight straight up. I think this is a spot where the Cowboys can sneak a win. I'm going to take Houston against New England. I think a complete overreaction with the Patriots did at home last week against Baltimore. Uh, New England's only road win is against the New York Jets, and you know Cam Newton's still stuck on three touchdown passes. So you know they had to use a wide receiver to throw a touchdown pass in the win against Baltimore. So I think you get value in Houston at home to knock off the Pats. I know it's a tradition around here to make fun of the Jets, but should the Chargers really be eight and a half point favorites over anybody at this point? They, all, they almost always play close games while New York is coming off of a bye, and going 0-16 is mighty difficult. At some point, I got to believe the Jets win one or two games this season. I love the value in this spot. Give me the Jets. I don't know. The Lions managed to do it just a few years ago. All right, guys, head to the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Take a look at all the odds on your screen for you here for Week 11. See if there's a money line bet that you like. And remember, picking an underdog means plus money. And this week, do it for Boda. All right, you guys, you can make that money line bet or any bet on the app risk-free. Right now up to $1,000. All you have to do, sign up for FanDuel Sportsbook account. New users get a risk-free bet up to $1,000 just by using the promo code right there. More ways, 1,000. If your first bet does not hit, it's all good. We've got your back. Fandle's going to refund you up to 1,000 bucks in site credit. And Ed, virtual fist bump to you because last week you told us to use that risk-free $1,000 bet to parlay the Cardinals on the money line against the Bills and over 56 for that game. You can thank Kyler Murray and Andre Hopkins for that. You said your jaw is still on the floor. But it, it, it wins a win, man. $1,000 to collect more than... $3,250. So, guys, where are you putting your risk-free $1,000 bet this week? Dave, giddy up. You are first. Well, John Sheeran has his spies out because he caught me. I like the Browns, and I am going to include them in this bet. It's a three-team money line parlay. The Browns beat the Eagles, the Ravens beat the Titans, and the Raiders lose to the Chiefs. $1,000 gets me just shy of three grand. Lisa, I think there's potential for your Chiefs to have an accident, just like your uh, your new puppy, against the Raiders in this game. This is a bad <laughs> matchup for them. Kansas City is 29th against the run, and John Gruden with Josh Jacobs and Devin Booker now as a one-two punch. Alternate spread, Vegas plus two and a half. Look at that great payout on your screen. Lisa, let's go to the more ways to win weather center. And as we take a look at the Doppler radar, whatever Doppler means, Cleveland could have another inclement weather game. They'll run the football frequently. Carson Wentz is incredibly turnover prone as a quarterback. So I'm going to parlay the under 45 and a half, lay the points with Cleveland. My $1,000 risk-free bet collects me more than $3,600. Awesome stuff, guys. And yes, Pony, I have had to already roll up some rugs. All right, gamblers, make sure to sign up for a FanDuel Sportsbook account right now to place your bet. And remember, use the promo code MOREWAYS1000 to get your risk-free bet up to $1,000. It's easy. It's legal. It's live. Take your winnings if you hit. Just get your money back if you don't. And that'll do it for us. Thanks for hanging with us here on FanDuel Sportsbook's More Ways to Win. Awesome having you guys with us each and every week. Take our experts' tips, place your bets, make your money, and join us right back here next week. Enjoy the kickoffs. Good luck with your bets.
Taichi Saturday night. Japan Racing with the Grade 1 Mile Championship, plus other great races from Hanshin Racecourse. Go to TVG.com for free PPs and play Japan Racing. Watch and wager Saturday night, 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific. Hey guys, I'm Dave Weaver with the Lanes End Farm Weekly Preview. On Saturday, Del Mar's Bing Crosby Meet continues and features the Grade 3 Native Diver Stake. Also Saturday, Woodbine action will include sprinters going into Grade 2 Kennedy Road. And then Sunday, they're going back to Del Mar with action in the Cary Grant State. Make sure to watch all that great racing and wager with TVG. Saturday, gate to wire action in the Grade 3 Native Diver Stakes from Del Mar. Three-year-olds and up set the winning pace at a mile and one-eighth. Play Saturday, Del Mar. First post, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Pennsylvania, welcome to week 11 of the NFL season. We are so psyched you're here with us. You're watching FanDuel Sportsbooks More Ways to Win. I am your host, Lisa Kearney, getting you ready for all the NFL action this week. And as always, I'm joined by my friends of the show, the best sports betting experts in the business. Hey, guys. Joined by our team here, download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, place your bets with their advice throughout the show. And of course, as always, use the promo code MoreWays1000 to get your risk-free bet up to 1000 bucks. It's that easy, so let's make that money easy, legal, and live right now. So let's party, guys. And Pittsburgh, huge fist bump to you. The Steelers sitting here at 9-0. and They're also on the road this week at Jacksonville, so let's get into this matchup. Uh, Pittsburgh's defense is absolutely dominating, leads the league with 36 sacks, allowing the second lowest completion percentage in passer rating for opposing quarterbacks. Had to make sure I get those stats correct. Mm -hmm. Andrew Filipponi, you have been very hard on your hometown Pittsburgh Steelers here. Who are you taking in this matchup with the Steelers giving 10 and a half? Well, not to toot my own horn, I did have them against Cincinnati last week, but, you know, I think that this game has been a troublesome spot for the Steelers over the years under Mike Tomlin. These are always sweated out games. In fact, in Mike Tomlin's 14 years as Steelers head coach, he is only covered as a double-digit road favorite one time in 14 years. He has an abysmal record in these games and I think that trend will continue. I was very impressed by what the Jags did against Green Bay last week. James Robinson has been a revelation at running back. And the Steelers love some self-inflicted wounds. They will win Dave Weaver and get to 10-0 and for the first time in franchise history. But they won't cover that double-digit spread. I'm with you, but let's take it even one step further than that. Even though this is already a tricky spot playing at Jacksonville, they have the Ravens next week. N not only next week... In four days from this game, a rare Thanksgiving game for the Steelers. They're hosting the Ravens. I think the last time that happened, Mike Tomlin was trying to trip all the players from, from Baltimore. But this is a spot that is really a bad, bad trap game for the Steelers. Do you think they really want to lay it out all out on the line to win by 11 points at Jacksonville? They would absolutely take a field goal or a touchdown win and get out of there 10 0. I'm, I'm with you. I'm taking the points. Yeah, that was bad optics. Bad look there, Dave. Good point. Uh, Steelers fans, if you roll with your guys and make a winning $50 wager on your team, you're going to win. Uh, you're going to collect more than $98 on your wager. You can make that bet right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Of course, as always, use that promo code again, more ways. 1,000. Now to the Eagles, who are still clinging to first place in the NFC East, despite their loss at the Giants, and they dropped to 3-5-1. The Eagles are in Cleveland this week, taking on the Browns, who are 4-1 and one at home, including that 10-7 win over the Texans last week. The Eagles are getting three points in this matchup. Dave Weaver, coming right back to you here. Who do you like in this matchup? 
I like the Browns. I think they're going to be able to run the ball on the Eagles, which everybody has been able to do of late. Six straight games where the Eagles defense has allowed at least 116 yards. That's the longest streak in the NFL, and it's only happened one other time this year, and that was the 1-8 Jaguars gave up six straight games of that many rushing yards. So Wayne Gallman scored two touchdowns against the Eagles defense last week. What's Nick Chubb going to get? Six? I mean, I don't think Pony he's going to be running out at the one-yard line in this game. He's going to be running into the end zone. The Browns defense has been solid of late. I just think they're going to be able to just pound the ball all day long on the ground. I think the line tells you that the public's opinion of both of these teams is very different than what John Shear and our odds maker thinks because you know the records say one thing but the spread is only three and if you look at the point differential between the two teams it's practically the same. Cleveland is actually minus 28 on the year they've been outscored and the Eagles are minus 29 so very even teams. Here's the difference for me I'm going to take Philly. The traditional fork in the road with both of these teams. Under Doug Peterson, the Eagles typically at this point in the season start to take off. They've rallied and won the division the last two years, and we know what happens to the Browns once it gets to uh, the nitty-gritty time. So I'm going to use that in a way to make a Philly pick, but very close matchup, and the line reflects that. No doubt about it. Hey, Eagles fans, go ahead and tail pony and double up your money here. If you roll with your team, take the points. A winning $50 bet on Philly collects more than 97 bucks. And team, we are just getting started here on our Week 11 Breakdowns. Coming up here, we're going to prime time. We're going to bet the Sunday night and Monday night matchups here in Week 11. Stay with us for that coming up right here in just about 10 minutes. Time now to get to our Director of Risk and Trading, the best in this awesome business. John Sheeran joining us now. Sheeran, hey, uh, that's just a fancy way of saying that you set all the lines at the FanDuel Sportsbook for us. So there's your fancy title. Now I need some fancy information here. There are some teams dealing with COVID issues this week. So most of the markets uh, does not have lines up for several key games here. But FanDuel has all the games listed right now. You can bet them. Uh, tell us how you're able to have them up and available. How are we doing that? Yeah, yeah, we're getting pretty proficient at it now, Lisa. We've had a lot of practice, obviously a lot of late-breaking news throughout the week uh, around COVID for a lot of the NFL teams. A lot of the market, a lot of the operators will take down the lines because of the uncertainty of who's actually affected, who's going to be on the field to play. But for me, the customers also don't have that insight either. So it's not really fair that we don't give them the opportunity uh, to bet on these games. The Kansas City Chiefs against the Las Vegas Raiders is a huge game, a big revenge spot for Kansas City that a lot of people will want to bet on. So what we decided to do and what we've tried to do all year long is have, have a guess at who's going to be fit um, come kickoff and, and have a line that reflects our opinion and let the customers have a, a, an opportunity at beating us on the line. Uh, for example, in the Kansas City game, we know that the Raiders... Basically, their entire defense were placed on the COVID um, IOR uh, yesterday. However, that can change on Saturday. And what we know from this season already is that it's very likely that it will. Uh, it's a precautionary measure. Uh, so we moved the line from minus 7, which is where it sat yesterday morning, to minus 8, where it sits right now, uh, given the, the impact of, of those guys potentially missing um, some training schedules. But people can bet that line now at minus 8, and, and hopefully... Uh, we get a game on, on Sunday to, to reflect that as well. Yeah, no doubt about it. Great customer loyalty there. Great insight you from you, Sheeran. We'll see you again in just a little bit. Uh, right now, it's hard to nerd out with some numbers because I love stats. You guys know that. So let's put some math to our money now and get the analytics answer from that guy right there, Ed Egros, joining us from Dallas. Ed, where's the low-hanging fruit for us here in Week 11? Lisa, let's start with the Packers and the Colts. And while we are still jittery, we are still just amazed by that catch by DeAndre Hopkins from Sunday. To me, the best receiver in football this year is actually Green Bay's Devontae Adams. And this season, Adams has had the highest target share of his team's passes at 35%. His weighted opportunity, or Whopper, uh, which incorporates a player's share of team targets, a share of team air yards, is 0.79. That's also number one in football. And airyards.com is a great resource for these things. The Colts do not have 
have anyone as close, uh, as explosive as Devontae Adams. The highest receiver they have in terms of weighted opportunity is Paris Campbell, point fifty five Whopper. That's 24th in football. He's got a 20% target share for his team. That's 24th in the NFL. There are injury concerns with Adams, yes, but he's missed time for four, and the Packers have somehow been able to make it work. I have the Packers as a money line moneymaker here. And I'm I'm fading you, and by the way, you're jittery because you're already on like your 17th cup of coffee this morning. Let's get to the real reason why you've got jitters. Uh, Indy, their defensive numbers are phenomenal, and I think that's why they win this game. They won't let Devontae Adams and company go off. Tony, another bet that I think has some good value is the total of 48 and a half between the Cowboys and Vikings, a game where I might need 30 uh, cold brews to make that work. The quarterback situation is in flux in Dallas. While it might be unfair to lump Andy Dalton in with the other backups, it's still insightful here. Since Dak Prescott got hurt, the Cowboys had the worst EPA per dropback of any offense in the NFL at negative .427. For some perspective, the second worst belongs to the Bears at negative .164, a sizable difference from 31st to 32nd. Minnesota has actually had a solid passing game in that time frame, but it's the ground game that is the identity. They run at 50.57% of the time. It's fourth highest in football. And if you take out garbage time, it's second highest in football at 56.5%. Cowboys have struggled throwing the football. The Vikings will run it, which limits possessions, keeps the clock going. I think this is an easy under. I'm with you. I'm going to tell you because I think the Cowboys are going to try to run it as well. They got uh, Ezekiel Elliott a little bit fresher now. He's coming in, maybe not completely at 100 percent, but a lot better than he has been in most of the most recent games. So both teams run the ball. The clock runs the entire game, and this game goes under. All those stats, all those numbers, you guys just know my love language. Thank you, gentlemen. Along with betting the total, of course, you can also bet the spread here. And Eagles fans. Great news. You can root against the Cowboys and make money at the same time. Win-win. Bet $50 on the Vikings to cover. You're going to collect more than $95 on a winning wager. Remember, download the FanDuel Sportsbook now to check uh, Sportsbook app to check out all of the lines right now. Week 11 ready for you. And new users, be sure to use that promo code right there on your screen. I'm going to mention it all show long. More ways 1,000 when you sign up for a new account. And for all of you new users, hey, Welcome. We are excited to have you with us. And we get it because sometimes when diving into something new, it can feel a little bit like drinking from a fire hose. The info is coming hot and fast. So right now, we're going to slow it down, take a deep breath, and uh, get to our Sports Betting 101 segment here with Dave. Dave, we've talked about spreads, money line bets. We've talked about total wagers as well. Um, fill us in on what all of that means and give us your best bet for each here in Week 11. All right, we'll try to give you three winners and a little tutorial of what we're all talking about here. And we'll start with the spread. Might be hard for Steelers fans to do, but I'm going to be betting on the Ravens in the game against the Tennessee Titans. Next week, they actually play each other. But in this spot, I think Baltimore does not have the luxury of looking forward. The Steelers probably do because they're 9-0. and But Baltimore, being a 6-3 and team, has to win this game, and I think they win it by at least a touchdown. And that's what they need to do because the spread is six points, which means they have to win by at least that for you to cash their bet. So if they win by seven or more, you're good to go. If they win by one, one through five, you lose. If they win by six, it would be a tie. You'd get your money back. As far as the money line, there's no spread in that bet. You're just saying who is going to win the game outright. So for this example, I'm going to go to the Kansas City Chiefs and the Raiders. We just heard that the line has moved from seven to eight. So now if they only win by a touchdown, they're not covering the spread, but you're winning the money line bet. So I think that's a little bit of a safer play in this one. The risk is heavier, though, because we see where it says minus 370 on the money line. That means you're risking $370 to make 100. I'm willing to do that. I don't see any way that they're losing twice to the Raiders this year. And as far as the total goes, that's the over-under on the game, which means you're taking two teams at the end of the game and adding up all their points. I'm going to use Washington and Cincinnati as my example. I like the over in this game. The total is 46 and a half, which means I'm going to need the two teams to get at least 47 points. It could be anything. It could be 47 nothing or 24-23. As long as you add them up to at least 47, we win. Two really good offenses that are rolling right now with the Bengals and the Washington football team. So my play in this one is the over. 
Great stuff, Dave. And just a reminder, Dave is using $100 as uh, an easy scale, an easy conversion there. But you can bet whatever you're comfortable with. You can bet $5, $10. Uh, have a day. You can bet more than that, of course. But don't feel like you have to go out and bet $100 out of the gates. Thank you, Dave. Uh, and there you go, Pennsylvania. Plenty of spread, money line, and total wagers for you available right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And I always like to mention this as well. Also, a ton of fun parlays, props, alternate lines for those of you who have been at this sports betting thing for a little while here. Check it all out on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. All right, moving on here, Pennsylvania, now that you are all set, Dave has got you ready to go. If you are making a road trip to the New Jersey area, this is your personal invitation to join us at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands, located right across the parking lot from MetLife Stadium, very close proximity there. You can't be in the stadium, but you can be at the Meadowlands with us in the sports book. Dozens of TVs, we've got table service, food, drinks, tons of lively action and fun people to hang out with. Of course, live sports betting on all your favorite teams and players as well. Mask up, keep your distance, stay safe, and enjoy your NFL Sunday with us at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. We look forward to welcoming you this weekend and anytime you're able to join us. Uh, not only can you place your bets with us, but you can also stack your daily fantasy rosters right on the FanDuel app. So let's dig in on DFS right now, guys. Help you turn four bucks into just about $500,000. That's a good day if you ask me. All you have to do is enter the FanDuel Sunday Million Contest right now on FanDuel.com and on the FanDuel app. Of course, our job on this show is to help you win all that money. So we're hooking you up with the best value plays for your rosters here in Week 11. Uh, FanDuel Editor-in-Chief J.J. Zacharyson in-house with his best values for this week. Hey, J.J. Hey, Lisa, I never thought that I would be in this position, but I'm recommending Taysom Hill this week, who's $4,500, and he's eligible on Fandle at the tight end position, so you're not throwing him in as a quarterback because Jameis Winston with Drew Brees out is likely going to see the majority of snaps under center for New Orleans. But Taysom Hill might be thrown in there a little bit more than usual, but even if he's not, over his last three games, he's averaged almost seven rush attempts per game. This game against Atlanta has one of the highest over-unders on this slate. Maybe they throw Taysom in at the goal line a little bit more than usual as well. So given his price, I actually think that he's a nice punt at the tight end position here in week 11. I also like Deontay Johnson, who's $6,400. If you look at Johnson's season in total, he has a 19% target share. That's good, not great. But if you look at the games where he didn't leave early, that target share average per game jumps to 25%, which is really, really strong. The Jaguars have been a below average team and adjusted points allowed this year. So at $6,400, I think that Johnson makes a lot of sense as a value. And then finally, there's DeAndre Swift. Swift played a season high 73% of Detroit snaps in week 10. He turned that into a 76% running back rush share, a 15% target share. And now Detroit faces Carolina who have been gashed by running backs all season long with the fifth best matchup in terms of opponent adjusted fantasy points allowed. So I really like DeAndre Swift at $6,900. Awesome stuff, JJ. Thank you. And make sure you use JJ's information for a shot at winning $500,000 in the Sunday Million Contest right now on FanDuel.com. Again, it's only about 4 bucks to enter, and there is a prize pool of $2 million. You can play right now. FanDuel.com and the FanDuel app. All right, time now to pile them up and just watch them pay. You guys know I love this part of the show. Let's bet some same-game parlays here. SGP is where you combine multiple bets from one single game. Let's get right to it. The bet is self-explanatory. You can dramatically increase your payout on your wager as you combine your bets for the same game, guys. All right, let's rock this out. But before we get to week 11, I got to roll back to week 10 because I got to give you guys some well-deserved fist bumps for last week. Pony, you gave us Jags over 19 and a half points plus Jags plus 10 and a half on an alternate spread there. A $50 bet collected more than 124 bucks. Ed, you parlayed the first half and full game under for the Texans and Browns, along with the Browns winning at half and full time. That also hit, paid at plus 515, $50 to collect more than 300 bucks. Boom, check, done. So let's get your same game parlays for this week, guys. Uh, Dave, no pressure. Going to start with you. Week 11, what you got? 
Lots of pressure. These guys hit it every single week, and I've been getting too crazy under first quarter, over second quarter, under third quarter. I'm going to keep it simple in this particular game, and I'm going to go with the Chiefs and the Raiders. Chiefs need to win by at least 14 points. That's the four-way margin bet. And then the first half away team, which is the Chiefs, over 16 and a half points. So they need to have 17 points at halftime and end up winning by at least two touchdowns. I think both of those things happen. My $50 is going to get me just shy of 150 right now. I'm looking at the Cincinnati-Washington matchup. You know, before the Bengals ran into the Steelers' defense, they had scored at least 31 points in three straight games, so that's going to put the game over. And I think that Washington is equipped for a shootout. Now that they've made a quarterback change to Alex Smith, who has thrown for 300 yards and two straight, his first start was phenomenal against Detroit in a losing effort. Washington to win close, parlay it with the game going over, and you got a nice payout. Falcons and Saints, Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill will tag team now that Drew Brees is out for a couple of weeks. They are going to air it out. It's going to lead to some lengthy touchdowns, but I'm also expecting some interception, interceptions, some short fields for Atlanta, and the pace of play should go up. So I want an alternate total over 54 and a half, but a Saints first quarter money line, you combine it, a $50 bet scores me a total of $224. We really ran the gamut there, all that plus money, but you could go with Dave. A little bit easier on that parlay there. Uh, awesome stuff, guys. You can tail one of our guys or, hey, just build your own same-game parlay. You got free reign here. It's in the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. Just click on the game that you like and then hit the same-game parlay tab and watch your odds increase. Be creative. Have fun. Fun, get as detailed and nitty gritty as you want, or just play it safe and do some money line parlays. A uh, special promotion as well. If you place the same game parlay, that's at least three legs, and the odds are plus 200 or longer. If you lose exactly one leg of that bet, FanDuel is going to give you up to $25 in site credit. So make sure to take advantage of this special promotion today. All those week 11 games are available for you right now. Well, I teased it. Time now to deliver and step into prime time. And we're starting with the Sunday night matchup here. A huge AFC West showdown with the 8-1 Chiefs in Las Vegas to face the 6-3 and three Raiders. Kansas City coming off that bye week, uh, looking to avenge their only loss of the year. Dave's already talked about this game a little bit. Raiders beat the Chiefs 40-32 back in week five. Now, despite that, the Chiefs are eight-point favorites in this one, Dave. They're on the road. Give me your pick. It's going to be the Chiefs, and I just can't see them playing as bad as they did defensively as they did in that first game in Kansas City where the Raiders threw for 346 yards. But if you look at what Steve Spagnuolo's defense has done since then, giving up only 203.8 yards a game in the air. So he's made some tweaks that's really uh, got them in a much better spot than they were in that prior matchup. And then you look at the offensive side of the ball. We know Patrick Mahomes is great, but he's really great against the Raiders. Most career passing yards are against them. Most touchdowns are against them. And this is not a skewed stat just because they're in the same division. He's actually played the Broncos one more time and has worse numbers. And he's played the Chargers the same amount of times and only has about 1,100 passing yards. And by the way, he has six rushing touchdowns in his career. Two of those have come against the Raiders. So he just loves to light up that defense. I think he'll do that in a big way in this game. Let's call it 54-13 Kansas City. How's that? Boom! A blowout. 72 points in that Week 5 matchup, as I said before. I hope you took the over in that one. Ed, coming to you now. Are you tailing or fading, Dave, on this game? What do you think? I'm fading, Dave, here. I think that last meeting between the Chiefs and Raiders is actually pretty informative in terms of how Sunday night is going to go. And one of the reasons why the Raiders won that game is because they utilized the deep ball. Derek Carr had nine air yards per throw that game with big completions to Nelson Aguilar, Henry Ruggs, Rest of the season is average yards, uh, average air yards for throw 8.1, almost a full yard shorter. Through the first five weeks of the season, Pat Mahomes was 11th at EPA CPU week composite at .16. Since then, he is second at .239. I am expecting a bunch of points in this game, but I think Carr has figured out how to play the Chiefs. I think this will be perhaps a back and forth affair. I do think KC wins, but by one possession. 
Okay, fair points on both sides, guys. You decide you can make that bet right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, but we're moving on to Monday night, and this one features a big NFC battle here. The 6-3 and three Rams head to Tampa Bay to take on Tom Brady and the 7-3 and three Bucks. Rams coming off a big win over Seattle. Surprise, I think, some people. Bucks giving four points in this matchup. Pony, which side do you like? I'm going to take Tampa because they're going to shut down Aaron Donald in this game. And that's the key to beating the Rams. you got to keep Aaron Donald off of Tom Brady. Now, remember, they did that in the Super Bowl two years ago when the Patriots played the Rams. Donald was non-existent. Tampa Bay, very low key. They put Penn State product A.Q. Shipley at center last week. And Carolina finished with only one sack. I can guarantee you. That if the Rams only get to Tom Brady once in this game, the Bucs will, bro- will blow out L.A. So that's what I'm going to go by. I think that Brady stays upright. I don't think he needs to throw his jersey into the uh, you know laundry after the game because it's going to be fresh and clean. And Tampa's going to win this game going away. Awesome stuff. Um, let's get to John Sharon because, John, I-, I get a lot of questions each week of t- people – Coming to me wanting to know which teams are taking the most action. I say, I got to check in with my guy, Director of Risk and Trading. Sharon, you set these lines. Which teams are uh, you seeing getting the most action here in Week 11? Uh, it's the Cleveland Browns, Lisa, as a field goal favorite at home uh, against the Philadelphia Eagles. Our look ahead line was one and a half. We moved it to three off the back of uh, their respective results last week. Uh, since then, like I said, one way traffic for them, about 80% of the money on the spread. Uh, and the money line have been for Cleveland. Uh, we really like this bias towards Cleveland, Lisa. We want to build a position against the Browns. Uh, we made it two and a half uh, ourselves, so we, we think that there's a bit of value off that key number for us laying that three. Uh, and I think the matchup is pretty good for the Eagles as well. Uh, the Browns have only scored 16 points in the last two weeks, and we know, obviously, they were impacted by weather. Uh, but I think predominantly running the ball on early downs the way that they have almost... Uh, most in the league over the last three weeks. I think it's a really good setup for Doug Peterson to be able to protect against the run as best he can. We know the Eagles are getting healthier on the offensive side of the ball as well. So I expect Carson Wentz to have an up game here off the back of that poor defeat against the Giants here in the MetLife, Lisa. Great perspective, Sharon. Thank you. Um, hey, guys, I'm just going to take a moment. I've got to get my team in here because I have some breaking news here in the Kearney house. This happened. That's right. New puppy in-house, so in love. So I'm just going to dedicate this next segment here to my baby boxer puppy, Boda. Let's put some money on some dogs here in week 11. Of course, you guys know, betting on an underdog to win outright is going to get you some great value, which means a big payout. So let's get some money line money makers in honor of my new little guy. He's nine weeks old. Boda, Dave, do it for Boda. Who's who's first? You're, you're up. You're on upset. Who's on upset alert this week? is a Boda Dallas Cowboys fan. I think the Cowboys can beat the Vikings. They're coming in fresh, and when they have a rest advantage on a team, they've done very, very well over the last five years. They're 11-4 and four straight up. I'm going to think they beat the Vikings in this game. Is that a Star Wars character-inspired name, Lisa Boda? I've got no clue on that one. I got a little bit better uh, <laughs> read when it comes to this game. I like Houston to upset New England. Horrible weather in Cleveland last week, so the Texans' numbers look terrible. There won't be wind and rain here, and the Texans are going to upset the Patriots. In honor of Boda, I'm going to pick not the biggest dog of the week, but maybe the biggest dog of the entire season, and that's the New York Jets. The Chargers should not be eight-and-a-half-point favorites to anybody. They are always playing close games. New York is coming off of a bye, and going 0-16 is nearly impossible. At some point, i got to believe the Jets win a game this year. Might as well be this one. I told you before, Ed, it's been done. The Lions did it not too long ago. But I tell you what, you guys can make any of those money line bets on the app risk-free right now, or any bet. Just use the promo code right there on your screens. Up to $1,000 for a risk-free bet. All you have to do is sign up for a Vandal Sportsbook account. New users get a risk-free bet up to $1,000 just by using the promo code right there. More ways, $1,000. If your first bet doesn't hit, it's all good. Guys, we've got your back. Vandal's going to refund you up to $1,000 in site credit. And Ed, coming right back to you, virtual fist bump uh, to you. Last week, you told us to use that risk-free bet uh, um, to parlay the Cardinals on the money line against the Bills and over 56 for that game. 
And you can thank Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins for that. I know you're still on a high with that one. But a win's a win, man. $1,000 to collect more than $3,250 on that bet. So, guys, where you're putting your risk-free $1,000 bet this week. Dave, giddy up. You are first. Mine's simple. I need the Browns. I need the Ravens. I need the Chiefs to all win. My $1,000 gets me back just shy of three grand. Raiders, I think they've got Mahomes' number. They were the only team that picked them up this year. Alternate spread bet on Vegas. I'm going out of bounds with this Cleveland Browns bet. Parlay the under total. Lay the points with Cleveland. $1,000 risk-free bet, $3,600. I told you guys they are placing your bets for you. New users, again, welcome. Use that promo code right there on your screen. More ways, 1000 is available for you right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app when you sign up for your new account. Use that promo code and be sure to join us right here on FanDuel Sportsbook. More ways to win each and every week of the NFL season. It's legal. It's live. It's so easy with us. Thanks for hanging with us. Enjoy the games this weekend and good luck with your bets. We'll see you next week. TVG Saturday. Eight to wire action in the Great Three Native Diver Stakes from Del Mar. Three year olds and up set the winning pace at a mile and one eighth. Play Saturday, Del Mar. First post, 3 30 Eastern, 12 30 Pacific. What's this all about? What, these guys? Yeah. They're only here on race day. Such a brilliant ride from off the pace. You must have been confident going into the turn. They did. We so had with the TVG app, I can have a day at the track whenever I want, right at home. Look, you can track results, stream live races. You can even place bets, all from your phone. All from your phone. There's a new home of horse racing, yours. Get a 50% bonus on your first deposit up to $250. TVG Saturday night, Japan Racing with the Grade 1 Mile Championship, plus other great races from Hanshin Racecourse. Go to TVG.com for free BPs and play Japan Racing. Watch and wager Saturday night, 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific. Week 11, what's up, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan? Welcome to the show. We are excited to have you with us this week and each and every week. You're watching FanDuel Sportsbooks, more ways to win. I'm your host, Lisa Kearney, getting you ready for all the NFL action this weekend. And as always, I am joined by our team of sports betting experts. These guys are here to help you make money. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, place your bets with their advice throughout the show they give you the answers guys use the promo code more ways 1000 to get your risk-free bet up to 1000 bucks so let's go ahead and make that money right now it's easy and legal and live so let's party and let's get right to it bears are on a bye this week you guys know that so let's kick things off with a huge matchup for the colts indianapolis six and three they're hosting seven and two packers this week Colts' defense is rocking and rolling, absolutely dominating. The unit ranks in the top five in total yards, passing yards, rushing yards, and points allowed. Andrew Filipponi, that defense is going to be tested. Aaron Rodgers is in-house. Um, Colts giving one and a half points. Do they cover that number? It's close. I think it's a good bet. I really do. I think the Lions says it all. Indy's favored, even though they've got an inferior record, and it's because of that defense. You know, number one in passer rating against two. So the strength of the defense is in stopping great quarterbacks. Uh, Green Bay couldn't even run the ball last week against Jacksonville. 3.2 yards per carry. So, you know, I know that the tendency here is to say, well, Aaron Rodgers wins these types of games. He's better than Phillip Rivers. But the X factor is the Colts' defense. They've been outstanding all year. And I think they'll be the difference in this game. Take the Colts. And not only that, I'm going to back you up on this one. I also like the Colts. But the offensive line 
for the Colts is the best in the NFL. They've given up the least amount of sacks, so Philip Rivers has had some time to throw the ball. Aaron Rodgers has lost the Colts the last two times he's played them. And then you look at what the Colts have done to this division. They've already beaten the Bears, the Vikings, and the Lions. They're looking for the sweep if they can beat the Packers here. I think they'll do it. And a great note there on Pony Slate there. 4-0-1 straight up in their last five at home against the Packers. Colts fans, this is all you. If you roll with your guys, take Indy at giving the points here. A winning $50 wager is going to get you more than 95 bucks on your bet. It's on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. All right, moving on to our next matchup here. Let's get to the Lions facing Panthers in Carolina. Detroit blew a 21-point second-half lead against Washington last week, but the Lions kicked a game-winning field goal as time expired to escape with a W. What a game that was. For Carolina, quarterback Teddy, Br Teddy Bridgewater is expected to start after leaving the game last week with a knee injury. He should be all good. Dave Weaver, Lions getting one and a half in this one. Which side do you like here in another tight matchup? I like Detroit. I just really have not been able to trust the Carolina Panthers at home over the last couple of seasons. 1-7-1 one, and one against the spread in their last nine home games. I'm not sold on Bridgewater, too. That was a pretty, looked like a pretty significant injury. If he gets knocked out early in this game, who's coming in? P.J. Walker of the XFL's Houston Roughnecks. And I'm not sure if that's going to be the recipe for beating the Lions. The one thing we know for Detroit their offense will always keep them in games. They're only one of five teams to score at least 20 points in every game this season. Who are the other four? The Steelers, Chiefs, Saints, and Cardinals, all division leaders. So this is a very good offense. I think the Lions outscore the Panthers and win. And Detroit stopped screwing around with their, you know, Adrian Peterson experiment last week. It became DeAndre Swift at running back, which I thought was a very shrewd move, smart move by the Lions. Going into a game against Carolina, a team that is 29th against the run. So I think the young legs of Swift will be the difference. Uh, and on the Carolina side, Christian McCaffrey is out for this game. He's done again. So I'm with Dave. I'm going to take Detroit. I can't believe I'm going to say it. I'm with Dave. Wow. I'm going to take the Lions in this game. <laughs> And spoiler alert, because coming up, we're going to talk DFS. And DeAndre Swift is definitely a great play this week. J.J. Jackarison is going to join us and explain why. All right, Lions fans, if you take the points and bet on your team here, you're going to collect more than $95 on a winning $50 bets. Fandle Sportsbook app. Again, new users, more ways, 1,000. And if you've watched this show, you know we are just getting started on our Week 11 breakdowns. Ahead, we're talking primetime. We're getting to our Sunday night, Monday night matchups. Uh, that's coming up right here in just about 10 minutes. We're going to bet the those for you as well. Time now to get to our director of risk and trading. Now the best in this awesome business, my man, John Sheeran. Hey, Sharon. Uh, it's just a fancy way of saying that you set the lines here at the FanDuel Sportsbook, but I had to give you your two. Um, let's get into this because there are some teams dealing with COVID issues this week that are affecting lines. So most of the market does not have lines up for several key games uh, here in week 11, but FanDuel does have all the games listed right now. Tell us how you're able to do that and have them available for our uh, for our client base. Yeah, I think first and foremost, you're right, Lisa, the whole decision is based around giving customers the opportunity to bet on these games. We understand that they want to bet on them, uh, regardless of what the situation is and regardless of what the unknowns are. Uh, and I guess that's a fair enough request. If you think about it, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs and Raiders is a good example where almost the entire defense for the Raiders were put on the COVID list uh, until at least Saturday. We fully expect the vast majority of those guys to be given the green light on Saturday to go on Sunday. And we don't think that it's fair just to leave the game off the board for the entire week until we get certainty around that because the vast majority of the public betting on the game have no insight as to who's going to play either. So we just make a decision to try and have our best guess at who's going to be on the field, what the impact of that on the line will be, and offer the line, let the customer make the choice on whether they want to bet now or want to wait until they get a certainty on who's going to play. For example, the Chiefs were a seven-point favorite yesterday. That news broke and all the, the entire market suspended the game. Uh, we put it back up last night at minus eight. So we moved it a point, albeit just one point, but off a key number of seven uh, and, and let customers make their decision from there. So it's all about customer choice from my perspective uh, and giving people the opportunity to bet on a high profile game that they uh, really will be attracted to this weekend, Lisa. 
And a great customer loyalty as well and insight from you. Thank you, Sharon. We're going to talk to you again in just a little bit. Uh, time now, right, though, to nerd out with some numbers because you guys know I love stats. And this is my man to give it to us. Let's put some math to our money. Get the analytics answer from Ed Egros joining us from Dallas. Ed, where is the low-hanging fruit for us here in Week 11? Lisa, I want to start with Tennessee and Baltimore. And this is a lesson in seeing one offense look better than another, but not so much so to where you assume they can cover a sizable spread. Both the Titans and Ravens were due to uh, due for regression to the mean here. And it's the stable quarterback metrics that should have been red flags. This year, completion percentage over expected. Ryan Tannehill ranks 22nd among all qualifying gunslingers at negative 0.2. His completion percentage from a clean pocket is 28th at 70.4%. Lamar Jackson is better in both areas, but not much better. 19th in CPOE at 1.7, 17th in completion percentage with a clean pocket at 74.6%. Ravens have a small edge passing, a small edge on the ground. Rushing yards over expected per attempt. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards are 8th and 10th respectively in football. Derrick Henry is 14th. Ravens have the advantage just about everywhere, but they're only small advantages, and 6 is a pretty big spread. I think the Titans cover Edward, I'm going to tell you, but I don't get it. You used to be the president of the Ryan Tannehill fan club. How many times have you come on here and given us all these great numbers on Tannehill? What are you doing? You're off the bandwagon? Come on. Where's the pot shot, even though we agree on this one? That's great. Hey, uh, another bet that I think has some good value here, the total of 48 and a half between the Cowboys and Vikings. And again, the quarterback situation is in flex in Dallas. And while it might be unfair to lump in Andy Dalton with the other backups, I think it's still insightful here. And since Dak Prescott got hurt, the Cowboys have had the worst DPA per drop back of any offense in the NFL at negative 0.427. And for perspective, Chicago is the second worst at negative 0.164. So there is a sizable difference between 31st and 32nd. Minnesota has actually had a solid passing game during the stretch, but you know the identity for the Vikings. It's all about running the football, and the Vikings run at 50.57% of the time. That's fourth highest in football. And when you take out garbage time, it's the second highest in football. That's 56.5%. So the Vikings are going to run a good bit, which limits the number of possessions. The Cowboys can't seem to throw the football, so they may not score too many points. I think this is an easy under. Well, even though you have a Carolina Panthers pocket square and you're going against my Lions, actually, that could be a Lions pocket square, I guess. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to, again, uh, back you like Pony did. This is going under because these teams are going to run the ball plenty. We care so much about fashion on this show. Added added bonus for all of you at home. Hey, and also this, in addition to betting the total, you can bet the spread. And Bears fans, you can root against the Vikings and make money at the same time. I call that a win-win. Bet $50 on the Cowboys to cover, and you're going to collect more than $95 on your winning wager. Remember, download the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now to check out all of the week lines available for you right at this moment. And new users, be sure to use that promo code MoreWays1000 when you sign up for your new account. Happy to have you with us. And for all of you new users, yes, welcome. We are excited that you are with us, and we get it. Sometimes when diving into something new, uh, it can feel like kind of drinking from a fire hose, right? <laughs> Info is coming hot and fast. So we're going to slow this thing down, take a deep breath for just a second, and get to our Sports Betting 101 segment here. And I need Dave for this. We talked about spreads, money line bets, total wagers as well. Fill us in here on what all of this means and give us your best bet for each here in week 11. All right, we'll drink from the sippy cup here and slow it down for you. We're going to just talk some simple terms that we've been using on this show. And let's start with the spread. That is the amount of points attached to a team which they need to win or lose by, depending on who you're betting on. I'm going to bet on the Ravens. Right now, the spread in this game is minus six, which means they need to win by at least seven points for me to cash that bet. I think they're going to beat Tennessee by maybe 10 or more. So I'm comfortable with betting them on the spread. Now, as far as the money line goes, there's no spread involved. It doesn't matter if you win by one or if you win by 50. You just need to win the game. And for this, I'm going to use the Kansas City Chiefs as my example. The spread right now is eight. What if they win by seven? They would not cover, but they would cash that money line bet. The problem is you have to lay a lot of juice as we call it, minus 370. So that means you're betting $370 to win 100. I'm willing to do that. I don't think there's any way they're losing this game 
two times in a row to the Raiders. So I'll take the Chiefs on the money line. And then let's talk about the total. At the end of the game, you total up all the points, both sides, add them together, and that's the number that you get. I'm going to play the over in the Cincinnati-Washington game. The total, 46 and a half which means I need 47, but that could be either team. So it could be 47 nothing Washington, or it could be 24-23 uh, Cincinnati. doesn't matter. As long as we get 47, Lisa, we're a winner. That's right. Basically just root for some offense here. And, guys, I just want to uh, also mention that Dave is using betting $100 as an example here. That's just really for ease of conversion uh, when you're looking at those numbers. But you can bet $5, $10. We have $1 even on parlays. Do what's comfortable for you and just have some fun. That's what it is all about. Uh, plenty of spread, money line, and total bets available for you right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. But I also like to mention, for those of you who have been at this for a little while, a ton of fun parlays, props, alternate lines as well. You can check it all out right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. New users, that promo code is waiting for you. More ways, 1,000. And not only can you place your bets with us, but you can also stack your daily fantasy roster right on the FanDuel app. So let's dig in on DFS right now and help you turn 4 bucks into $500,000. This is happening, guys. That's a good day, if you ask me. All you have to do is enter the FanDuel Sunday Million Contest right now on FanDuel.com, also available on the app. Of course, our job on this show is to help you make that money, hooking you up with the best value plays for your lineup. FanDuel Editor-in-Chief JJ Zacharyson is in-house with his best values for Week 11. Hey, JJ. Hey, Lisa. I never thought that I would be in this position, but I'm recommending Taysom Hill this week, who's $4,500, and he's eligible on Fandle at the tight end position, so you're not throwing him in as a quarterback because Jameis Winston with Drew Brees out is likely going to see the majority of snaps under center for New Orleans. But Taysom Hill might be thrown in there a little bit more than usual, but even if he's not, over his last three games, he's averaged almost seven rush attempts per game. This game against Atlanta has one of the highest over-unders on this slate. Maybe they throw Taysom in at the goal line a little bit more than usual as well. So given his price, I actually think that he's a nice punt at the tight end position here in week 11. I also like Deontay Johnson, who's $6,400. If you look at Johnson's season in total, he has a 19% target share. That's good, not great. But if you look at the games where he didn't leave early, that target share average per game jumps to 25%, which is really, really strong. The Jaguars have been a below average team and adjusted points allowed this year. So at $6,400, I think that Johnson makes a lot of sense as a value. And then finally, there's DeAndre Swift. Swift played a season high 73% of Detroit snaps in week 10. He turned that into a 76% running back rush share, a 15% target share. And now Detroit faces Carolina, who have been gashed by running backs all season long with the fifth best matchup in terms of opponent adjusted fantasy points allowed. So I really like DeAndre Swift at $6,900. Great stuff, JJ, and you can follow JJ at Late Round QB as well on Twitter and Instagram. And make sure to use JJ's information for a shot at winning $500,000 in the Sunday Million Contest right now on FanDuel.com. Again, it's only about 4 bucks to enter the contest, and there is a prize pool of $2 million. It's FanDuel.com and the FanDuel app. Thanks again, JJ. Uh, time now to pile them up and just watch them pay. I love this part of the show. Let's bet some same game parlays right now. Uh, guys, SGP is where you can combine multiple bets from one single game. The bet, obviously, self-explanatory here. You can dramatically increase your payout on your bet as you combine your wagers and just watch your odds increase. So let's rock this thing out. But before we do... Get to week 11. I got to give you guys some love for week 10 here. Some fist bumps. Pony, you gave us Jags over 19 and a half points plus Jags plus 10 and a half on an alternate spread here in week 10. A $50 bet collected more than 124 bucks. Fist bump to you. Ed, you parlay the first half and full game under for the Texans and Browns along with the Browns winning at half and full time. That also hit paid at plus 515. $50 to collect more than three. Hundred bucks. Thank you very much. So let's get your game, same game parlays for this week here. And Dave, starting with you. And yes, sir, the pressure is on. Yeah, I just want a fist bump next week. So I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm not going to try to do anything crazy and make $500 off $50. I'm going to be making about $100 on my bet. I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs to beat the Raiders on the four-way margin 
which means I'm taking them to win. You could pick either by 1 to 13 or 14 or higher. I think they win by at least two touchdowns. So the Chiefs need to win by 14 or more, and they need to score 16 and a half points over that in the first half. That's all. Just two things. $50 gets me back, oh, you know, close to 150 to 200. Yeah, I'm going to parlay two, two uh, propositions here, too. I'm going to take the over between Washington and Cincinnati. We know that both teams can score points, except when Cincinnati plays the Steelers and Ravens. In this case, it's Washington. And when Cincinnati goes on the road, they haven't won this year. So Washington to win a, cl uh, a close cl game, uh, points are plenty, and that's how you get the same game parlay winner. Falcons and Saints. It's the Jameis Winston Taysom Hill show with Drew Brees out for a couple of weeks. They are going to air it out, which means a lot of points, a lot of lengthy touchdowns, but maybe some interceptions as well. Atlanta getting some short fields. And I think the pace of play will be uh, fairly fast in this contest. So I want an alternate total over 54 and a half. Saints first quarter money line. I think they come out firing. And if you combine them, a $50 bet scores me a total of $224. Awesome stuff, guys. Some plus money there. Some two-leg parlays for you guys. You can tail one of our guys or build your own same-game parlay right now in the Fatal Sportsbook app. Just click on the game that you like, click on the same-game parlay tab, and then just watch your odds increase. Be creative. Have some fun like those guys. And also, FanDuel is offering a special promotion if you place the same-game parlay. That's at least three legs and the odds are plus 200 or longer. If you lose exactly one uh, one leg of that particular bet, FanDuel is going to give you up to 25 bucks in site credit. So make sure you take advantage of this special promotion today. Week 11 available for you right now. Well, I teased it. Time now to deliver and step into prime time. Let's get to those bright lights. We're starting the Sunday night matchup. Huge AFC West showdown here with the 8 and 1 Chiefs in Las Vegas facing the 6 and 3 Raiders. As we know, Kansas City's coming off their bye, looking to avenge their only loss of the year. It was two of these Raiders who beat the Chiefs 40-32 in Week 5. Hope you took the over on that game. Uh, despite that, the Chiefs are eight-point favorites in this one. Dave, uh, we've alluded to this game a little bit. Give us your pick. I know you like them on the money line, but why? Well, I would have hated to have been in the locker room uh, after that game because I'm sure defensive coordinator... Steve Spagnuolo really ripped into his secondary, who gave up 346 yards in the air to the Raiders. Whatever he did, he lit a fire underneath them because they have only given up about 204 passing yards a game since then in the last four games. So I'm expecting them to play a much different defense than they did against the Raiders first time around. I cannot see them putting up 40 points again against the Chiefs. And if they do, then I think the Chiefs are going to score 50 or more because Mahomes shreds the Raiders. It's the team he's had the most success against touchdowns, yards, rushing touchdowns, you name it. It's not a skewed stat just because they're in the same division. Actually, against the Broncos, they played another game. He hasn't had the same numbers against them or the Chargers. So he just rips the Raiders apart. He will do that again here. I think the Chiefs win big. All right, Ed, are you tailing or fading Dave on this one? What are your thoughts? I'm tailing. I am tailing Dave and that I think there will be a lot of points. I am fading Dave and that I think the Raiders will cover here. Not win outright, but cover. I think the last meeting between the Chiefs and Raiders tells us a good bit about how this game is going to go. Derek Carr had nine air yards per throw in that last meeting. Big completions to Nelson Aguilar and Henry Ruggs. And in the rest of the season, Derek Carr has averaged 8.1 air yards per throw. That's almost a full yard shorter. Now, through the first five weeks of this season, Pat Mahomes was 11th in EPA CPOE composite at .16. Since then, he is second at .239. So Mahomes is improving, but Carr may have figured out how to face this Chiefs pass defense. I'm expecting a high-scoring affair, but KC wins by one possession. All right, there it is. Let's get to Monday night now. We'll hear from Ed again in just a moment. This one features a big NFC battle. The 6-3 and three Rams head to Tampa Bay, taking on Tom Brady and those 7-3 and three Bucks. Rams coming off a big win over Seattle. Might have surprised some people there. Bucks giving four points in this matchup. Pony, who do you like here? Well, the mark of a great team is that you can leave your home stadium and win. And Kansas City went to Baltimore this year. The Steelers went and played the Ravens and Titans on the road and, and won. How about what the Saints did in Tampa Bay? You compare that to the Rams, they're 0-2 on the road against teams with a winning record. They dug themselves a huge hole against Buffalo, and they beat themselves against the Dolphins. And I don't see that trend 
changing. I think largely the Rams are a team that tries to play defense and run the ball to win. That's kind of old fashioned. That's not how you beat Tom Brady in this explosive offense. So I think overall in 2020, the Rams are a pretender and not a contender, and that'll shine through in this game, bet the Bucks. Pretender, not a contender. Ed, coming back to you to get your pick here. Which side do you like in this matchup? Well, Pony wants to give me some pot shots. I'll do the same and that I agree with them, but the Rams are very much contenders. I think the line is exactly where it needs to be at this point. It is the best defensive matchup of the week, I think. Rams give up the fewest air yards of any defense in football with 899, either with pass breakups or forcing quarterbacks to go shallow. Bucks blitz more than any defense, 170 times to be exact, or 42.3% of the time. Seems like the only times they don't uh, is if they're facing a quarterback who throws short, like a Drew Brees. But that's not Jared Goff. He's roughly league average with his average depth of target. You should expect a lot of pressure in his face. So again, I think four is exactly where this line needs to be. But if you make me pick, I'm going to say the Buccaneers win by five. All right, there it is. Great stuff, guys. We'll hear from them again in just a moment. But right now, I have to get back to John Sheeran. Coming to you because I get a lot of questions each and every week. Betters really wanting to know which teams are seeing the most action. What are you seeing on your book here in week 11? Uh, undoubtedly, the Cleveland Browns, Lisa, is a three-point favorite at home to Philadelphia. Our look-ahead line on this game was one and a half. It was moved to three after their respective results last week. That may be actually a little high, given that we only made it two and a half when we sat down yesterday to look at it. Uh, it's been one-way traffic for those Browns. 80% of the money on the spread and the money line has been for Cleveland. But that's a bias and a position that we really like. Uh, for me, this is a really good matchup for Doug Peterson. I think he's going to be able to prepare to stop the run. The Browns have been um, the team, the highest rate in, in the league, running on early downs. And I think Philadelphia can do a good job of stopping that. The Browns have scored 10 points or less in three of their last four games. Some of those uh, games were affected by weather, and the weather looks to be improving this weekend. But I think Philadelphia can come up with a game plan that keeps them in this game uh, long enough. And I think the three points in what will be likely a low-scoring game will be enough for the Eagles to cover. Awesome, Sharon. Thank you. Great perspective, as always. Uh, now let's get to the Saints quarterback, Drew Brees. We saw what happened to him last week in his injury here. Suffered a collapsed lung and fractured ribs in that Week 10 matchup. Uh, pro football doc David Chow has more on Brees' recovery and the impact the injury will have when he returns. Hey, Doc. Drew Brees came into the Week 10 contest with three rib fractures on his left side. Then after being fallen on by Contavious Street, had two rib fractures on his right side and some sort of collapsed lung. I don't think the collapsed lung was that severe as he was able to stand on the sidelines the second half of the game. But there's no question he's going to miss the rest of the month of November at least. Rib fractures heal reliably. Within two weeks, usually the soreness goes away, probably four weeks before they're relatively healed. But the lung is the question mark. So just by the ribs, Drew Brees could be back in early December. But with the lung involvement, too, I think the question mark, is it mid-December or late December? But I firmly believe Drew Brees will be back this season, this regular season, and be 100% when he does re return. It's a big deal, but once he comes back, there shouldn't be a lot of after effect. It's certainly painful. Thank you, Doc. Uh, let's get back to sports betting now, and you can place any bet with us right now on the app, risk-free, up to $1,000. All you have to do is sign up for a FanDuel Sportsbook account. New users get a risk-free bet up to $1,000 just by using the promo code right there on your screen. More ways, $1,000. Doesn't get easier than that. If your first bet doesn't hit, it's all good. We've got your back. FanDuel's going to refund you up to $1,000. In site credit. So, Ed, uh, first of all, you know I like to give out some fist bumps on this show. Usually it's more in person, but a virtual one works here. Last week you told us to use that risk-free $1,000 bet to parlay the Cardinals on the money line against the Bills and over 56 for that game. Boom, check, done. It hit. You can thank Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins in that amazing play for that. But, hey, a win is a win. $1,000 collects more than $3,250 on that parlay. Awesome stuff. Uh, so, guys, where are you putting your risk-free $1,000 bet this week? Dave, giddy up. You're first. 
I'm going to play a three-team parlay, and I just need these teams to win. They're money line bets. Uh, John Sheeran has a terrible take on the Eagles. Their rushing defense cannot stop Nick Chubb. He does look good with his popped collar in the background, though, today. So good on you, John. But I take the Browns, the Ravens, and the Chiefs all the way. And thousand dollars gets me just shy of three grand. Well, I'm going to go away from the Kansas City pick, Fade Dave, which has been a very successful strategy over the years on this show. I'm going to take the Raiders plus two and a half. I'm going to do an alternate spread. The Chiefs have won three in a row since that loss, but the combined outcome, the win-loss record of their combined opponents is six and 22. They haven't played anybody. Uh, they barely beat Carolina. This game's close. The Chiefs will win, but do that do that risk-free bet on, on Vegas, not Oakland, to keep it close. I know John Sheeran likes the Eagles in that spot because they're getting healthier, but Carson Wentz is the most turnover-prone and perhaps turnover-worthy quarterback in terms of his throws of any starting quarterback in the NFL. So I'm expecting few points in that contest against Cleveland. Parlay the under, lay the points with the Browns. I think they may run for uh, good chunks of yardage. My $1,000 risk-free bet collects me a total of more than 3500 bucks. Awesome stuff, you guys. Gamblers, make sure to sign up for FanDuel Sportsbook account right now. It's so easy and it is fun with us. And remember, use that promo code MoreWays1000 to get your risk-free bet up to $1,000. It's easy, it's legal, it's live. Just take your winnings if you hit, get on out, back up the truck, and just get your money back if you do not. It's the best mulligan in the business. Just do it all over again. Thanks for hanging with us today, you guys. That is a wrap on this show. You've been watching FanDuel Sportsbooks More Ways to Win. Take our experts' tips, place those bets, and make yourself some cash. Hey, enjoy kickoffs this week. Good luck with your bets, and we're going to see you right back here next week on FanDuel Sportsbooks More Ways to Win. Saturday on TVG2. Phillies and Mares go a mile in the Great Three Chalupi Stakes from Churchill Downs. Brought to you by Shadwell Farm. Play Saturday. Churchill Downs. First post, 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific. Hey guys, I'm Dave Weaver with the Lanes End Farm Weekly Preview. On Saturday, Delmar's Bing Crosby Mead continues and features the Grade 3 Native Diver Stake. Also Saturday, Woodbine Action will include sprinters going in the Grade 2 Kennedy Road. And then Sunday, they're going back to Del Mar with action in the Cary Grant State. Make sure to watch all that great racing and wager with TVG. Hey, neighbor, we got to talk. Well, Jay? No, he only comes to Bugle on race days. Race days? With the TVG app, every day is race day. You can place bets right in your phone. Even stream live races. Top notch runners facing off. I can have a day at the track whenever I want, right at home. Coming through, guys. Go get him, Mike. Mike Smith? Yeah, Mike Smith. There's a new home of horse racing, yours. Get a 50% bonus on your first deposit up to $250. TVG Saturday. Gate to wire action in the Great Three Native Diver Stakes from Del Mar. Three year olds and up set the winning pace at a mile and one eighth. Play Saturday, Del Mar, first post, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. What's up, Colorado? Welcome to week 11 of the NFL season. You're watching FanDuel Sportsbooks, more ways to win. I'm your host, Lisa Kearney. Thank you for joining us. We are excited to have you with us. We're getting you ready for all the NFL action this week. And as always, I'm joined by our team of sports betting experts. These guys are here to help you make money. So download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and place your bets with their advice throughout this show. Use that promo code right there listed on your screen, More Ways 1000 to get your risk-free bet up to $1,000. All right, so let's make that money. It's easy, legal, and live right now. I'm ready. They're ready. You're ready, Colorado. Let's do this thing, and we are kicking things off with your Denver Broncos, hosting one of the hottest teams in the league right now. The Miami Dolphins, guys, winners of five games in a row. Broncos have dropped back-to-back -back games. Quarterback Drew Locke throwing a career-high four interceptions last week against the Raiders. Andrew Filipponi, I'm going to come to you first here. Denver is giving three-and-a-half points against Miami. Which side do you like? 
I think the Dolphins are the biggest sucker bet of the year in the NFL. This comes from a guy that a few weeks ago bet the Dolphins at like 150 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. I saw value, and now I think it's swung in the other direction. What Denver did last week, the five turnovers against Vegas, that won't be duplicated in this game. And so whenever that happens, I look for a shift in the other direction, a bounce back game, if you will. Uh, they held Derek Carr to 154 passing yards. I think Denver's defense will do the same to Tua. They will cover three and a half, Dave, and I'll do you one better. They're going to win the game outright. I mean, what was the look ahead line before the year started on this? I guarantee you the Dolphins weren't a road favorite. When was the last time they were a road favorite? Dan Marino? Uh, by the way, it was 2017. Uh, I looked it up. Marino actually beat the Dolphins, uh, beat the Broncos twice uh, in Denver. I like Miami. Uh, I think maybe a lot of people are just confused how the Miami Dolphins can be favored on the road because they're a good team, Pony. They have forced 10 turnovers in the last five games, a surging defense. They're 6-0 and all time against the spread at Denver as a franchise. They're a hot team against a very cold team. Drew Locke was playing hurt in that game last week. You could just see it in his face. He was struggling. Struggling. I'm not sure he's going to make it through this game. The Dolphins are going to be all over him. Uh, I think this is a bad spot for the Broncos. All right, Broncos fans, you can do you. Support your guys. Roll with your guys. Take the Broncos and the points in this matchup. A winning $50 bet on Denver means you're going to collect more than $97. Like I said, hey, bet with your heart. You can fade our guys. All show long is a FanDuel Sportsbook app. Now to the Sunday night football matchup and a big AFC West showdown. The 8-1 Chiefs are in Las Vegas to take on the 6-3 Raiders here. Kansas City looking to avenge their only loss of the year. Remember, they lost to the Raiders back in week 5, 40-32. Hope you guys took the over on that one. Chiefs, eight-point favorites in this one. Dave Weaver, I told Broncos fans they can fade you in the last one. Give me a great pick here on this game. I like the Chiefs. So if, if Pony's going to say that he, he likes the Broncos because they turned it over five times, that won't happen again, then you can't like the Raiders who caused those five turnovers. So that can't happen again. Look, the Chiefs are the better team here by far. Even though the Raiders beat the Chiefs earlier in the season, the Chiefs are a different team right now defensively. The Raiders put up 346 passing yards in that game against the Chiefs. But since then, they've given up only 203 Point eight, and Mahomes shreds the Raiders. He has the most yards in his career against them, the most passing touchdowns, the most rushing touchdowns. And that's not skewed just because they're in the division. Actually, the Broncos and the Chargers, he has much worse numbers against. So this is a game, Pony, where I think the Chiefs win 54-13. Uh, you are officially out of your mind, Dave. I don't know if we had an official designation no. before, but the 50, come on, 54 to 13. I mean, you got to do an alternate spread bet then on Kansas City to win the game by 20 something points. That would be a huge payout for you. Uh, I think the line's too big. I get what you're saying about the, the, the Mahomes threw an interception in the first matchup. Carr won't throw for 350 yards again. I agree with all that. But the problem here is that Kansas City's defense does have an Achilles heel. They're not good against the run. That's how they almost lost to Christian McCaffrey in Carolina two weeks ago. And the Raiders have been excellent at running the ball with Thunder and Lightning, Josh Jacobs, and Devin Booker. So I don't think the Raiders will sweep the Chiefs, but eight seems like way too many points. And that's why I'm going to take the Raiders to cover. That's a large spread. Uh, guys, there's stuff on that film for sure. Broncos fans, this is a tough choice here between two division rivals facing off. We get it. But if you root against the Chiefs and put your money on the Raiders and the points there, you're going to collect more than $95 on a winning $50 bet. And hey, Colorado, we are just getting started on our week 11 breakdowns. More game previews ahead, including the Monday night football matchup Rams at the Bucks. That's coming up right here in just about 10 minutes. Time now to get to our director of risk and trading the best in this awesome business. John Sheeran, my man. Hey, John, that's just a fancy way of saying uh, you set the lines for us at the FanDuel Sportsbook. So, Sheeran, I got to get to some information this week. Teams are dealing with COVID issues impacting uh, markets that do not have lines up for some several key games here. But FanDuel has all the games listed right now. Tell us how you're able to have them available. Yeah, it comes down to customer choice, Lisa, effectively. You know, we've had a lot of experience through 10 weeks now of what COVID restrictions look like on how the lines are, are suspended almost on a daily basis in certain games. A good example of that this week is the Chiefs and the Raiders. Uh, yesterday, we were up with that yesterday morning, minus seven. 
uh, the news broke that almost the entire defense has been placed on the COVID uh, reserve. Um, and, you know, that's true till Saturday. We expect the vast majority of those guys to be given a green light to go on Sunday uh, come Saturday. So uh, we just want betters to be able to have the opportunity to have a bet. We understand that they don't have a, you know, the general public don't have inside information as to who that is and who's not likely to play. So we just kind of have our best guess at it, offer a line and make sure people have the choice to be able to bet on the games, uh, despite obviously having some unknowns out there. No doubt about it. A great customer loyalty to Sharon and awesome insight. We'll get back to Sharon in just a little bit. But right now, I want to nerd out with some numbers with my guy. You guys know I love stats. So let's put some math to our money now. I get some analytics answers here from Ed Egros joining us from Dallas. Ed, where is the low-hanging fruit for us this week? Lisa, let's talk Packers and Colts here. And even though DeAndre Hopkins absolutely dazzled us with uh, catching that Hail Mary pass from Sunday, to me, the best receiver in the National Football League this season is Green Bay's Devontae Adams. This season, Adams has had the highest target share of his team's passes at 35%. His weighted opportunity, or Whopper, which incorporates a player's share of team targets and share of team air yards, is 0.79. That's also number one in football. By the way, airyards.com, great resource to find this information. The Colts do not have anybody like Devontae Adams. The highest receiver they have in terms of weighted opportunity it's Paris Campbell, .55 Whopper, good for 24th in football, 20% target share for his team. That's 24th in the NFL. There are injury concerns with Adams, but he's missed time before. The Packers have somehow made it work. I also trust last week was a fluke for both teams. And Pony, I had to sign a release so that Lisa would allow me to say, money line, money maker, but that's what I'm doing with the Packers. Wow. How about that? Uh, if the Colts were a fruit, I think they might be something bitter, maybe like a grapefruit. I think, uh, Lisa, you'd have to grab one of those because even though they make you kind of make a face when you see their offense with Phillip Rivers, they're not a lot of big plays. Their defense makes you perk up because they're number one in interceptions. Uh, they have number one against uh, the pat passer rating. So that's why I'm going to fade you. And I think that this Colts defense will be the biggest reason why Indy gets the win. Tony, another bet that I think has some good value here is Tennessee getting six to Baltimore. And here is a lesson in seeing one offense look better than another, sure, but not so much to where you can assume that they can cover a sizable spread. Both the Titans and Ravens were due for some regression to the mean. And it's the stable quarterback metrics that maybe should have been red flags for us. This year, completion percentage over expected for Ryan Tannehill ranks 22nd among all qualifying quarterbacks at negative 0.2. His completion percentage from a clean pocket it's 28th at 70.4%. Lamar Jackson is better in both areas. Yes, but not much better. 19th in CPOE at 1.7. 17th in completion percentage from a clean pocket at 74.6%. Ravens have a small edge passing, a small edge in rushing as well. Rushing yards over expected per attempt. J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards are both in the top 10. Derrick Henry is 14th. So again, the Ravens do have advantages. But they're not significant advantages. I think the spread is just too big. I'm taking the Titans to cover. Well, you can have your CPOEs and Whoppers. I'm going to go with revenge. This is a huge revenge game from last year when the Titans knocked the Ravens out of the playoffs. But what happened in that game? The Ravens actually outgained Tennessee by about 230 yards. I have a feeling that Tennessee is going to have a struggle to even get a touchdown in this game. I'm going to fade you. I like Baltimore. All right, great stuff by all of you guys. Now, if you like reigning MVP Lamar Jackson and the Ravens to cover in this matchup, go ahead and place that winning $50 bet to collect more than $97 on your wager. Remember, download the Fatal Sportsbook app to check out all the Week 11 lines available for you right now. And be sure to use that promo code right there on your screen. More ways, 1000 to get your risk-free bet up to 1000 bucks. All right, guys, uh, for all of you new users, I want to take a second and just say, Again, welcome. We are excited to have you with us, Colorado, and we take care of our family and our friends. So let's break this whole thing down, get to our Sports Betting 101 segment. This is a special fist bump for those of you that are new to sports betting. Dave, I like to say, starting it was kind of like drinking from a fire hose. Information can be coming hot and fast. Um, we have talked about spreads, money line bets, total wagers as well. Let's take a deep breath here. Fill us in on what all this means and give us your best bets for each here in week 11. 
All right, yeah, a real simple tutorial on what we're talking about here. And we'll start with the spread, and that is the amount of points attached to a team in which they need to win or lose by to cash your bet. Let's go to Baltimore. That not only am I fading Ed on that, but it's also my best bet of the week. So my spread bet here is going to be to bet the Ravens, and they're going to win by at least six. So they need to win by a touchdown or more, and they cover the spread. I think they do that easily. But what if they don't cover the spread, but they still win? That's when you want to bet the money line. The money line, you're just saying, who wins the game outright? Doesn't matter if they win by one or if they win by 50. For this example, I'm going to use Kansas City and Las Vegas. Because the line is eight, what if they only win by seven? You're not going to cast a spread bet, but the money bet, you're going to win. But we see under, underneath money right there where it says minus 370, that means you need to risk $370 to win 100. If you're playing the Raiders, you need it. When there's a plus sign there, that means you're only risking 100 and you're getting back the $295 in profit. But for me, I'm willing to risk the money to, to win the 100 on Kansas City to win. Now, as far as the total, at the end of the game, you take the scores of both teams, you total them up. And that number, what you get there is the total. So in this particular instance, I'm going to use Cincinnati and Washington. The over under the total is 46 and a half. I like the over. I think this game will get at least into the 50s, but as long as we get 47, we're okay. And that can come from either team. So it could be 47 nothing, or it could be 24-23. At the end, as long as they add up to at least 47, we're a winner. That's right, Dave. Bet that over and then go ahead and cheer for a whole bunch of offense, right? And I also like to mention, uh, Dave, thank you. Use the example of $100 for each of those bets. It's an easy conversion on those numbers. But, hey, guys, you do not have to bet $100. Bet what you're comfortable with. Have some fun. $1, $5, $10. Put it out there and then watch and see what happens with your bet. It's all right there on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. In Colorado, there is plenty of spread, money line, and total wagers available for you on the app. And I like to mention this as well. For those of you that have been at this for a little while, there's also a ton of fun parlays, props, alternate lines available for you as well. Again, it's all there on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And new users, make, up, you, make sure you sign up for your new account using that promo code MOREWAYS. 1,000. And not only can you place your bets with us, but you can also stack your daily fantasy rosters right on the FanDuel app. So let's dig in on DFS right now and help you turn just about four bucks into $500,000. That's a good day if you ask me. All you have to do is enter the FanDuel Sunday Million Contest right now on FanDuel.com and on the FanDuel app. And of course, on this show, it is our job to help you win all that money. So we're hooking you up with the best value plays for your lineup. Editor-in-Chief J.J. Zacharyson in-house with us with his best values here for Week 11. Hey, J.J. Hey, Lisa. I never thought that I would be in this position, but I'm recommending Taysom Hill this week, who's $4,500, and he's eligible on Fandle at the tight end position, so you're not throwing him in as a quarterback because Jameis Winston with Drew Brees out is likely going to see the majority of snaps under center for New Orleans. But Taysom Hill might be thrown in there a little bit more than usual. But even if he's not, over his last three games, he's averaged almost seven rush attempts per game. This game against Atlanta has one of the highest over-unders on this slate. Maybe they throw Taysom in at the goal line a little bit more than usual as well. So given his price, I actually think that he's a nice punt at the tight end position here in Week 11. I also like Deontay Johnson, who's $6,400. If you look at Johnson's season in total, he has a 19% target share. That's good, not great. But if you look at the games where he didn't leave early, that target share average per game jumps to 25%, which is really, really strong. The Jaguars have been a below average team and adjusted points allowed this year. So at $6,400, I think that Johnson makes a lot of sense as a value. And then finally, there's DeAndre Swift. Swift played a season high 73% of Detroit snaps in week 10. He turned that into a 76% running back rush share, a 15% target share. And now Detroit faces Carolina who have been gashed by running backs all season long with the fifth best matchup in terms of opponent adjusted fantasy points allowed. So I really like DeAndre Swift at $6,900. Great stuff. Hey, JJ's got more information on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow him at late round QB and make sure to use JJ's information for a shot at winning $500,000 right now. The FanDuel Sunday Million Contest, you can find it right now on FanDuel.com. And of course, on the FanDuel app, you can turn just about four bucks into $500,000. And there is a prize pool of $2 million right now, FanDuel.com and on the app. 
All right, moving on. There's even more money to be had. Oh, yes, that's happening. The Sunday Million is just one of many daily fantasy games offered at FanDuel.com and on the FanDuel app. There are also a bunch of free DFS contests that you can enter right now. Just log on to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app. Sign up for your chance to win cash and prizes for free with our daily contests available each and every week. Did I mention that they're free? Okay. Uh, moving on now to one of my favorite parts of the show. Time now to pile them up and watch them pay. Yes, let's bet some same game parlays here. SGP is when you bet multiple uh, wagers in the same game. You combine it all there. The bet is self-explanatory. So let's get right to it. You can dramatically increase your odds on your payout by uh, betting, uh, combining your wagers for the same game. I've already said that. Why am I saying it again? Let's just rock this thing out. But before we uh, get into week 11, I want to get you guys uh, some well-deserved fist bumps here for week 10. Because, Pony, you gave us Jags over 19 and a half points plus Jags plus 10 and a half on an alternate spread there. $50 bet collected more than 124 bucks. Ed, you parlayed the first half and full game under for the Texans and Browns, along with the Browns winning at half and full time. Check done. That also hit paid at plus five fifteen. Fifty dollars to collect more than three hundred bucks. So let's get your same game parlays for this week. And Dave, starting with you, and I'm just gonna say it. Yes, there is pressure here. Go ahead, give me a winner. Yeah, I've been cold as an igloo as far as these things go. So I need a fist pump next week. So what I'm going to do is keep it very simple. I'm not going to try to put six things together and make a ton of money. I'm just going to take the Chiefs to win by at least 14 points. You can find that in the four-way margin bet. Chiefs win by 14. And in the first half, they're the away team. They need to get 16 and a half points. So the Chiefs have 17 points or more at halftime and end up winning by two touchdowns. I'm getting, you know, close to 200 bucks on my $50. I'm going to go to a game that I think will be the most exciting game on the schedule this week, and that's Cincinnati and Washington. And before you raise your eyebrows or laugh at that, these are two teams that are going to score a ton of points. Uh, the Bengals, before the Pittsburgh game, three straight games of at least 31 points. And look at what Ben Roethlisberger did to that Bengals defense. Four touchdown passes. I think Alex Smith, in a rhythm, in a group, now almost 400 passing yards last week. He's going to do the same. Over Washington to win a close one. Great same game parlay option. I want to go to Falcons and Saints, one of the higher scoring totals of the week. And Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill will make this game mighty interesting. I'm expecting them to air it out. A lot of lengthy touchdowns, but maybe some interceptions as well, which gives Atlanta some short fields. And I'm also expecting the pace of play to go up a little bit. So I want an alternate total over 54 and a half. The Saints first quarter money line should also be good. And if you combine them, a $50 bet scores me a total of $224. All that plus money. That's three great two leg parlays right there for you. You can tail one of our guys or just build your own same game parlay in the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. I just click on the game that you like. Then click on that same game parlay tab and watch your odds increase. Be creative. Have fun. One, two legs, three legs, as many legs as you want. And also take advantage of a special promotion FanDuel is offering right now for same game parlay. That's at least three legs. And the odds are plus 200 or longer if you lose exactly one leg of that bet. FanDuel is going to give you up to 25 bucks in sight credit. So make sure to take advantage of that special offer as well. It's on the app right now. All right, I teased it, and now it is time to deliver. Let's step into those bright lights and get to prime time and the Monday night matchup here. This one features a big NFC battle, Dave. The 6-3 and three Rams head to Tampa Bay to take on Tom Brady and those Bucks. They're sitting at 7-3 and three on the season. Tampa Bay coming off a 46-point offensive explosion against the Panthers. It's their highest point total of the year. Then you look at the Rams giving up less than 19 points per game. It's the second best in the league. This is going to be a great matchup. Uh, Andrew Filipponi, the Bucks are getting four points here. Who do you like? Well, this is a rematch of quarterbacks who squared off in Super Bowl 53. And if you remember that game, Jared Goff under pressure was atrocious and couldn't move the ball on Bill Belichick's defense. And I think the same thing is going to happen here. The Bucks are second in the league in sacks. And with Goff, when he's pressured, he's bad. He's two and two this year when he's sacked two times or more. The Rams are 4-1 and one when it's two or fewer. And remember, Andrew Whitworth, Dave, old man river, that left tackle in L.A., 
He's gone, so who protects Goff's blind side? It's going to get ugly. The Bucks will cover. Well, my play in this game is going to be the over, and way over. I think both teams are going to put up a lot of points, and you cannot run on the Bucks. and Sean McVay knows that. He might have Jared Goff throw the ball 60 times in this game, and I think they can do that successfully. I'm not really that afraid of the Tampa Bay secondary. I think the, the Rams are actually going to cover this game, but it's going to be an absolute shootout on Monday night. So the over would be my play. All right. And the Rams, again, getting four on the road there at Tampa Bay. Great stuff, guys. Uh, John Sharon, come right back to you here because I get a lot of questions each week. Betters want to know which teams are getting the most action. What are you seeing on your book here in Week 11? Uh, without a shadow of a doubt, it's the Cleveland Browns. Lisa's a three-point favorite at home to Philadelphia. Our look ahead was only one and a half. Uh, that moved all the way to three off the back of their respective results last week. I actually think that could be a little bit too much. 80% of the money at three has been... Uh, both on the spread and the money line has been for Cleveland. So I expect that to be almost the most lopsided book that we have this week. Word of warning, though, it's a bias that we like in a position that we want to build. Um, you know, the Browns have, have been really in trouble scoring, scored 10 points or less in three of their last four games. Uh, and I think the Philadelphia Eagles can do enough to stop the run where the Browns have been, uh, you know, the most run heavy team in the NFL on early downs. Uh, over the last four weeks as well. So the Eagles have had their troubles defending the run. I think they're getting healthier now. They did rank third in the league last year defending the run as well. So I don't think it's something um, that they can't fix. And for us, uh, I'd be very happy to see that bias continue towards Cleveland, Lisa. Heed the caution. Thank you, Sharon. Great perspective. Appreciate the insight. Uh, now let's get to an injury update here. Saints quarterback Drew Brees uh, and his injury last week. We also saw him suffer that collapsed lung and fractured ribs in that Week 10 matchup. Pro football doc David Chow has more on Brees' recovery and the impact the injury will likely have on his return. Hey, Doc. Drew Brees came into the Week 10 contest with three rib fractures on his left side. Then after being fallen on by Contavious Street, had two rib fractures on his right side and some sort of collapsed lung. I don't think the collapsed lung was that severe as he was able to stand on the sidelines the second half of the game. But there's no question he's going to miss the rest of the month of November at least. Rib fractures heal reliably. Within two weeks, usually the soreness goes away, probably four weeks before they're relatively healed. But the lung is the question mark. So just by the ribs, Drew Brees could be back in early December. But with the lung involvement, too, I think the question mark, is it mid-December or late December? But I firmly believe Drew Brees will be back this season, this regular season, and be 100% when he does re return. It's a big deal, but once he comes back, there shouldn't be a lot of after effect. All right, great perspective, Doc. Thank you. A, a, certainly a painful injury. Though. All right, guys, I'm going to make the hard pivot now and uh, bring some breaking news to you all in the Kearney house. We just got a new little puppy. It happened. Puppy love. Take a look. Yes, that's my little baby Boda. He's a boxer. He's nine weeks and we're going to put some money on dogs here in week 11. Of course, betting an underdog to win outright is going to make you uh, get you some great value. And of course, a big payout that goes with that. So let's get some money line money makers from our guys right now. Dave, do it for Boda. Do it for my little man. Uh, you first. He's on upset alert here in week 11. You got it. And you need to buy Boda uh, Dallas Cowboys uh, jersey because I know they make those for dogs. They make boots. Oh. Get him some Dallas Cowboys gear because they are going to beat the Minnesota Vikings off of a situation where they have a rest advantage. They're 11 and 4 since 2015. On a rest disadvantage, the Vikings are only 7 and 8. So I'm taking the fresh team here. I think the Cowboys win. Yeah, here's my dog for anybody who wants to see it. That's Poppy. You can see it. Uh, she's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so I'll make a dog pick and I'll dedicate it to her. I like Houston. Uh, Deshaun Watson last four games, nine touchdowns, zero interceptions. If he keeps that up, I don't think Cam Newton can keep pace. So I think Houston is a very under the radar money line money maker bet this week. Fun fact, Boda is a Spanish word for wedding. So let no man put asunder my love for the New York Jets here. Almost no teams in the NFL go 0-16. 
the bad teams are better than we think they are, are, are worse than they think than they really are, and the best teams are not as good as we think they are. So I think this is a great position for the Jets to get win number one. Hey, added info there, and I've got to give you some some love, Ed, because a little extra research goes a long way. Well done, guys. Uh, you can bet those underdogs on the money line right now on the app. You can make that money line bet risk free as well. Right now, up to one thousand dollars. All you have to do is sign up for a FanDuel Sportsbook account. New users get a risk free bet up to one thousand dollars just by using the promo code More Ways One Thousand. If your first bet doesn't hit, it's all good. We've got your back. FanDuel's going to refund you up to 1000 bucks in site credit. Ed, virtual fist bump to you. More love for you. Last week, you told us to use that risk-free $1,000 bet to parlay the Cardinals on the money, money line against the Bills. And over 56 for that game. Boom, check, done. It hit, nailed. And you can thank Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins for that. But hey, a win is a win. And that was an insane play. <laughs> $1,000 to collect, more than 3250 bucks. Awesome. So, guys, where are you putting your risk-free $1,000 bet this week? Dave, giddy up. Where's it going? Very simple for me. A three-team parlay, just the money line on all of them. The Browns to win, the Ravens to win, and the Chiefs to win. $1,000 gets me back about three grand. I know the Raiders' defense hasn't been able to practice, but when I found out how much Dave liked Kansas City... I went with a Raiders alternate spread plus two and a half to keep it close against the Chiefs. I am fading John Sheeran here. I think Cleveland under total parlay that with laying the points. You can get $3,500 with your $1,000 risk free bet. Awesome. Awesome stuff, guys. Uh, make sure to sign up for that FanDuel Sportsbook account right now to place your bets. Hey, place your bets, place their bets. It's all about making that money and finding the good value. Use the promo code MoreWays1000 to get your risk-free bet up to $1,000. Again, Colorado, it's easy, it's legal, and it is live. Take your winnings if you hit and get your money back if you don't. It is the best mulligan in this business. And, hey, this is our time to say thank you for joining us here on FanDuel Sportsbooks, More Ways to Win. I'm Lisa Kearney. Thank you for joining us this week and every single week. Enjoy the kickoffs. Good luck with your bets. And we're going to see you right back here next week to bet them all. Saturday on TVG2. Phillies and Mares go a mile in the Great Three Chalupi Stakes from Churchill Downs. Brought to you by Shadwell Farm. Play Saturday. Churchill Downs. First post, 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific. War of Will! What an apprentice! <laughs> Hey, neighbor, we got to talk. Well, uh, Jay? No, he only comes to Bugle on race days. Race days? With the TVG app, every day is race day. You can place bets right in your phone, even stream live races. Top-notch runners facing off. I can have a day at the track whenever I want, right at home. Coming through, guys. Go get him, Mike. Mike Smith? Yeah, Mike Smith. There's a new home of horse racing, yours. Get a 50% bonus on your first deposit up to $250. TVG Saturday. Gate to wire action in the Great Three Native Diver Stakes from Del Mar. Three year olds and up set the winning pace at a mile and one eighth. Play Saturday. Del Mar. First post, 3 30 Eastern, 12 30 Pacific.